was like a life-size dollhouse. It was huge and, whoa, was that a whirlpool bath? I was in heaven. <laughs> Slow down, dear. OMG, you even have an indoor badminton court? I love badminton. This was the most amazing house ever. Hey, I'm Helen, and I grew up in a normal house with a normal family. I love my parents and life was great and all, but the one downside was the long journey to my new high school. My mom, Grace, said she had the answer to this and suggested I go and stay with my Aunt Lucy as she lived closer to the school. Okay, so I'd never met Lucy before. Actually, until Mom mentioned her, I didn't even know I had an aunt. Mom explained that Aunt Lucy moved to Canada for business and had only returned to the U.S. recently. This was the first time I had to live so far away from my parents, so I was kind of worried I'd get homesick. But one advantage was my bestie, Madeline, lived right nearby. Awesome, right? Besides, this place was dope. I couldn't stop gawking at that badminton court. Seriously, it was bigger than my house. Aunt Lucy, I guess you must really like badminton. Yes, many people think it's just a backyard game, but it's a true sport to me. Wow, it was a rarity to meet someone with the same taste as me. We chatted for ages about our interests. Lucy was so easy to talk to, and I honestly felt like I'd known her for years. I would love to become a pro badminton player, but mom thinks I should keep it as a hobby and find a more stable career. I see, but don't let others discourage you. The true passion is worth pursuing. Let me arrange a training schedule for you. Now, try this. Oh, how do you know I like lobster linguine? At first, living with Lucy was like being in a dream world. She pampered me, bought me clothes I wanted, and cooked the most delicious dishes. But beneath the shine, there was also a darker side. Lucy was super strict. I mean, major general level strict. I had to wake up at 5 a.m. each morning for training, run laps of it for an hour, and hit 50 shuttlecocks over the net in a row. If I missed one, I had to start over again. Meanwhile, I still had to keep up with my homework, and I couldn't go and meet my friends on the weekend or do anything without asking Lucy for permission first. <sighs> At least at school, I could vent to Maddie about it. I expected her to agree with me, but she shrugged and said, I guess your aunt just wants the best for you. Besides, your badminton skills have improved loads. If I could live in a luxurious house, eat delicious food with such a caring aunt, I'd so put up with a grueling training schedule. Yeah, I guess she's right. Maybe I should be more grateful. Of course, on finding out about the school badminton club, I immediately signed up for it. I was walking over to the court, swinging my racket about and ready to show off my skills when these two guys approached me. Go back to the cheerleading team where you belong, sweetie. Leave the court for the real pros. How dare these idiots judge me like this? They hadn't even seen me play. Oh yeah? I challenge you to a game. Then we'll see who's serious. We're the best players in the school, just so you know. Pick one. Suddenly, another guy appeared next to me and said, Then let's play doubles. Oh my god, he's Tyler, the best badminton player in the whole school. I've heard all about his reputation and seen photos of him with a trophy in the school newsletter, but I've never met him before. Surprisingly, he's even cuter in person. Pfft, you can defeat us in singles, but can you cover that useless girl in a duo match? That's it. Scoot over. Let me show you what this useless girl can do. The game started and instantly... Tyler and I vibed on the court and were hitting the shuttlecocks at lightning speed. We won in straight sets, and those losers looked so bummed out. <laughs> Tyler seemed super impressed. And then, good game, Helen. Do you want to hang out again? How about tomorrow? We could go get some food. Mamma mia, how can I say no to that? But when I told Aunt Lucy, she didn't take it so well. Love may seem appealing, but it's a waste of time and energy that will lead to a decline in your badminton abilities. Your grades, your mood, everything. You're too immature to deal with those type of emotions right now. This was ridiculous. I wasn't a little kid. I was perfectly capable of making my own decisions and following my own feelings. He's a sweet guy who helped me out. Of course he did. All guys appear nice at first. Maybe if you just gave him a chance. Wake up, Helen, and stop yourself from throwing away your dreams for some boy. Ugh, it was no use. My aunt was too stubborn to listen. I stormed up to my room, feeling frustrated. No way was I letting my aunt's strictness ruin things with my dream guy. So I decided to sneak out to meet Tyler. 
But how? Ah, I know exactly the person who can help. Matt's red code. Aunt Lucy won't let me see Tyler. Please help me distract her. Okay, but only if you get me a signed copy of the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Easy peasy. After that day, I was able to go on multiple dates with Tyler, all thanks to Maddie's help. She always came up with the most convincing excuses, like I was going to her house for group study or we were going to a super important event. Then one time when I was supposed to study at home, it was actually Maddie pretending to be me. Later, I sneak back into my room, all giddy. You wouldn't believe how great our date was today. But Maddie just gave this awkward look. What's up? Did my aunt suspect something? N- no, everything's fine. Then she immediately climbed out of the window. Hmm, strange. But the next day, she acted like nothing had happened. So I let it slide. She must have just felt unwell or something. Meanwhile, things with Tyler were getting better and better. After a romantic date, we walked home, and suddenly Tyler stopped me, looking all shy and nervous. Helen, I I really like you, and I like spending time with you. Be my girlfriend, will you? OMG, this was the best thing that had ever happened to me. I flung my arms around him and yelled out of my lungs, yes! When I finally let go of him, out of nowhere, a kid on roller skates bumped into me and sent me tumbling into the road. A car zoomed toward me, and before I could process anything, Tyler sprinted forward and pushed me away. When I opened my eyes, he was lying there unconscious. I panically called an ambulance and went with him to the hospital. As I sat in the waiting room with floods of tears, I was so scared and didn't know what to do that I ended up calling Aunt Lucy. Only a few minutes later, I saw her hurrying toward me, looking dead serious. Helen, what have I told you? You lied to me to hang out with a boy? I had no heart to argue about that and immediately burst into a fresh bout of tears. It's my fault. Tyler risked his life to save me and now he's hurt. Aunt Lucy's demeanor softened and she pulled me in closer. After a while of consoling me, she finally opened up and shared a story I didn't expect. Actually, I fell in love when I was around your age, but he betrayed me. I just don't want you to be hurt like that. Oh, that's terrible. But Tyler is a good guy. I just know he is. He saved me. And for that, I'm truly grateful. Okay, I'll trust your judgment and give you my blessing to get to know him further. Thank you. Right then, the doctor appeared and told us that Tyler was alright and he would make a full recovery in a few days. Thank goodness. When Tyler was back, Aunt Lucy stuck to her word and gave me and him a chance together. She even offered to give both of us a badminton lesson. Brace yourself for the craziest training routine ever. But practicing with Tyler made it actually bearable and a lot more fun. I had a big competition coming up, which could get me the professional player title and a chance to join the national team if I won. So I needed all the training I could get. Just one more step away from my greatest dream. Also, I couldn't contain my smile when seeing Lucy gradually warmed up to Tyler. My big day finally came. Mom and Dad were here to support me as well. I excitedly got ready. But when I opened the kit bag... What happened? Oh no! Who's destroyed our babies? I... I think Lucy might have done it. Why on earth would she do that? I overheard her saying that she was only pretending to like Tyler so she could keep an eye on you both. What?! I honestly believe that Aunt Lucy was actually giving Tyler a chance. But it still didn't make any sense. Even if Lucy hated Tyler, why would she try to ruin this competition? She knew how much it meant to me. There's one more thing, but I don't think you're ready to hear it. Gosh, just spill the beans, Maddie. Actually, the day I disguised as you, I found something out. Lucy's not your aunt. She's your mom. She wants to take you back to Canada with her, and she knows if you won this contest, then you'd never want to leave. I stood there in complete shock. So, my beloved family I'd known all these years wasn't actually mine? And Lucy? How come she had the brazenness to show up now as my real mother and wanted to take me back? I felt like my whole life had been one big lie and immediately rushed to find Lucy. Is it true? You're my real mom? How did you know? I can't believe you did that to me! You're selfish, terrible, and ruined everything! Go away! I don't want to see you anymore! I don't have a mom like you! Grace is my one and only mother! Lucy looked completely broken, then quietly left. I was shaking in anger and pain when a gentle hand laid on my shoulder. Helen, sweetie, I know it's hard to take it in. Trust me, this was difficult for us all. You all lied to me! How could you just agree to send me off to her? You never consider me as your real daughter, do you? Don't think silly, honey. We love you so much and never want to let you go. Unless it's better for you. Then mom told me how Lucy came and persuaded her. Turned out, Lucy had a very tragic past. 
Since childhood, she'd always been the black sheep in her family. They treated her poorly and despised her badminton passion. Then when she told them she was pregnant, they threw her out. And her boyfriend also ditched her right after that. So she had no choice but to leave me at the orphanage and begin a new life in Canada. After countless hardships, she finally became successful. And all she desired was to reconnect with me. I believe everyone deserves a second chance. That's why I let you two live together for a while. Only if you're happy, I would tell you the truth, so you wouldn't be too shocked. Besides, she can help you more than me now. Hey, you even inherited her badminton spirit. I was stunned for a while. It's true that Lucy left me, but that's because she didn't want me to suffer with her. And I indeed had a happy life. I shouldn't be so rude to her. But it was still a lot to digest, so I went home with mom. I shut myself away until the next day. Tyler came and tried to convince my gloomy self to go for a walk. I know that's a lot, but I think you should make up with Lucy. Why are you still on her side? She only pretended to be nice to you, and she ruined the contest just to take me away from this perfect life. We can find our chance in plenty of other competitions. But there's only one Lucy. She's your biological mother, and it's fine to be mad with her. But you should never reject her. My mind wandered back to all the happy moments I'd had with Lucy. Our interesting chat, the delicious meals she cooked, and the times we played badminton together. She even had a special room to store badminton equipment, especially the rackets. Wait, Lucy treasured badminton rackets. If she simply wanted to stop us from competing in the contest, then she could have just hidden our rackets or pretended that the car broke down. But she would never destroy the rackets like that. Ty, do you remember who else handled our rackets that day? I'm not sure. I, um, oh, I think Madeline had them at some point. So, could it be Maddie? But why? She had no reason to do that. She was my best friend and always supported me to play badminton. I stormed over to Maddie's house, but she's arguing with her dad on the doorstep. You useless, pathetic rascal. Go then. I don't care. Maddie ran off in tears, and I followed her to an alley. Seeing her like that made some of my anger toward her fade. Hey, what's going on? Maddie seemed surprised to see me. She tried to dodge some of my questions at first, but seeing nowhere to hide, she finally confessed. My mom left me to that alcoholic dad who does nothing but shout at me all day. You have two moms who love you, and I... I don't even have one. I was angry at Lucy because, to me, all of the moms who gave up their child are heartless and deserve no forgiveness. She even wanted to take you to Canada. I couldn't lose you, too. The fear and jealousy got the better of me, so I broke your rackets, then blamed Lucy. I'm so sorry. This sounds tough, but you still shouldn't have done it. I'm always here to listen to you, and I'm not moving anywhere. You're stuck with me. When Maddie felt better, I took her to my home and intended to find Lucy to apologize for everything. But mom said Lucy had decided to go back to Canada and was on her way to the airport. I immediately hailed a cab to the airport, then ran through departures, desperately trying to find Lucy. I was starting to think I was too late, when suddenly I spotted her about to walk through towards security. Lucy! Mom, please don't go! I... I thought you don't want me. No, I was just confused and angry and... I'm sorry that I hurt you. We finally sorted things out and agreed to give each other a chance to start over. So, what happened next? Well, Lucy decided to expand her business to the U.S. so she could stay here with me. My wonderful adoptive parents took Maddie in after helping her get away from her toxic father. So now I have two amazing moms, an awesome sister, and... Yes, you know it! A super cute, thoughtful boyfriend. Ugh, who's calling at this hour? Orla, your sister is having a wedding this weekend. Make arrangements to attend. My sister Rowan is having a what now? She had never had a date, and she's only 19. Are you still listening, Orla? Surely you have a boyfriend by now, so bring him along. Boyfriend? Yeah, right. As if I haven't been absolutely caught up with school lately. No matter what I did, in Mom's eyes, I was always the idle one, who partied around with boys, while Rowan was obedient and hardworking. Ugh. You see, my parents divorced ages ago. So I live with my father in Atlanta, and my mom and sister Rowan live in the suburbs of Denver with my grandma. 
It's been a long time since I've met her, so I wouldn't mind paying a visit on this occasion. Only, where am I meant to find a guy at this short notice? My dear hometown, it's been a hot minute. Oh, there's Paul. Sorry I kept you waiting. Let's go, gorgeous. Let me introduce my boyfriend, a local college boy that I found on the internet. Even though we're on business terms, look at him. Handsome, gallant, and polite. I hit the jackpot. As we pulled up at the house, I saw my grandma waiting outside with a casual-looking guy. Oh, he must be my future brother-in-law. I happily ran over to hug grandma. Rowan, you're back. Mata has been waiting for you. My, my. Look at our match made in heaven. Is she confusing me with Rowan? I was about to correct her when suddenly the guy pulled me close and said, We are indeed a charming couple, aren't we, honey? Excuse me? Where is he putting his hand on? And is his eyesight just as bad as grandma's to think I was Rowan? Just then, Rowan stepped forward. But strangely, she just smiled at us, then linked arms with Paul. And this is my boyfriend, Grandma. Do you think we look great together? What's wrong with everyone? Had I been zapped into some parallel universe or something? Suddenly, Rowan dragged me across the garden. Then she told me how Grandma had been diagnosed with Alzheimer's, which had progressed so quickly recently, meaning sometimes she forgets. Other times she remembers, muddling everyone and everything. Not wanting to upset or confuse her, my mom and sister decided to act according to Grandma's memories, including this wedding. And of course, that Mata guy is not my sister's real fiancé, just a close classmate. But now she's confusing the two of us, so the lead role in this wedding play is yours now. Grandma's memory was deteriorating. Yeah, that sucks. But was a fake wedding necessary? Also, the thought of pairing up with that rude Mata guy sickened me. No way! Listen to your sister, kid. Everyone is doing it for Grandma. Did he just call me kid? Okay, that's it. This guy needs to know his place. But before I could jump at him, both my parents appeared and started lecturing me. Ugh, whatever. I stood my ground. Faking a marriage is ridiculous. Happy now? Dad's little girl is acting spoiled again. Please, I raised her just fine. And you, if you'd taken care of your mother better, she wouldn't have been this way. Not again. They only see each other once every couple of years, but the bickering always followed almost instantly. <sighs> What's going on? You two have never been at odds. What's wrong? At the sight of Grandma, Mom and Dad suddenly took a 180. A moment ago, they were screaming each other's heads off, but now they're being all smiley, lovey-dovey. How ridiculous. But did Grandma really not remember that my parents were divorced? Her condition seemed to be as bad as they said. This meant I had no choice but to go along with their plan to make her happy. However, I was no professional actor. Constantly improvising according to Grandma's memories was not easy, especially when I was stuck with the annoying Maida for a scene partner. My mind was too full of thoughts to sleep properly, so I got up extra early and went for a stroll in the garden. Out of nowhere, Maida ran to me and grabbed my hand. Did you sleep well last night, Bay? Huh? Who's he acting for? In this empty garden? Or is this just an excuse to touch me? I forced my hand away from his, but then he had the audacity to whisper in my ear. Shush, Grandma's watching us from upstairs. Ugh, what a creep. Meanwhile, Rowan said she wanted to please Grandma, but actually, she wasn't even a little bit cooperative. At lunch, while I had to squeeze out a smile as made a spoon-fed me soup, Rowan was being distant toward Paul, her boyfriend. Paul, my sister also likes being fed. Right, that's her favorite dish. Paul got the point right away, so he scooped up some soup and gave it to Rowan as Grandma watched expectantly. But for some reason, my sister seemed irritated, shoved his hand away, and said she's allergic to it, which was some total nonsense. Grandma was obviously discontent hearing that, then stood up to leave the table first. What's the matter with you, Rowan? You didn't have to look so annoyed in front of Grandma. Why can't you just work with Paul? That's how Rowan's always been. She's shy and couldn't open up easily to strange guys as you can. Uh, what did she mean by that? Before I could reply, Dad came to my defense. How can you say that? Isn't Orla trying her best to play her part and not make Grandma suspect a thing? Oh, so you two are doing great, and we're just ruining everything? There they go again. 
Usually Rowan and I would just stand there and watch, because only our grandma can stop their fights. And this time was no exception. As soon as they saw grandma, my parents immediately turned around and held each other's hands. Mita was just as quick when he grabbed my arm as well as grandma's, and then invited us for a walk. Hey, who are you? Why are you being so friendly to us? Oh dear, it was only a few seconds ago and her memory of him had already vanished. I immediately said Maida and I went to the same college and he was visiting me. <sighs> I thought that was it, but no. Speaking of college, she immediately asked why we were home when we should be at school. The whole family froze at her reaction. My parents carefully mentioned the wedding to see if she remembered anything. But she snapped. How can you talk about marriage when my two grandchildren are still of school age? Have you two lost your mind? So, the next morning, I had to go to the university with Rowan. But the cherry on top was riding this tiny pink bicycle together, per grandma's order. <sighs> this was embarrassing, but how can we refuse? She only recalled the old memories. So, I wandered around here all day waiting for Maida and Rowan to finish their classes. Suddenly, I spotted Paul with some girls. Hey, what are you doing here? Oh, Orla. Uh, I... I'm just giving directions to these freshmen. Actually, I'm waiting to pick up your sister. Wow, Paul seems to have a real crush on Rowan. I have to help my timid as a hare sister seize the opportunity. I took Paul to the lecture hall just as class was wrapping up, then pushed Rowan towards him, wished them a happy outing, and quickly pulled Maida away to give the couple some space. Finally, I could go home. But just as we reached the college gate, we saw Dad helping Grandma come this way. Seeing my face turn pale, Dad immediately explained that Grandma thought today was my first day of college, so she insisted on coming to pick us up. Jeez, it was bad enough coming here on a tiny pink bike. I drew the line at my dad and Grandma picking me up. I wasn't a preschooler. Uh, I was assigned to tidy the football field. It's my turn on duty today. Don't wait for me. Oh, is that so? Take your time. I'll look around for a while. I looked at Maida, hoping he had some idea to get me out of this, but he just grinned and took the broom from me. Come on, let's clean up this place. I was only gonna fake cleaning a bit, but turns out Grandma's the most meticulous supervisor ever. Orla, there's some trash over there. Look closely, honey, there are dry leaves in the corner. Then, you have to wipe these stains with a wet cloth. As soon as she went away, I lay on the field, panting with exhaustion. Aren't you tired? Oh man, I'm already drained out. Can't imagine how bad it's gonna get for me at grandma's age. Poor her. It's scary how one day we might forget our family. Birth, aging, sickness, death, these are things we can't change. Orla, but one thing we could do is cherishing every moment with our loved ones as these times are special. I was so wrong when, initially, I considered Maida as an impolite, annoying person. His deep thoughts made me feel comfortable enough to pour my heart out about my family. Why my parents divorced, why I didn't visit Grandma as much as I should have, and all the fights with my sister Rowan. We talked loads, and it felt like we've known each other forever. That night, I kept tossing and turning, and couldn't stop thinking about how Maida diligently helped me clean up, about our conversation in the afternoon, and the way he helped me stand up. Oh, what's wrong with me? It's undeniable that this side of him is so attractive. But there's one problem. When we were leaving, he said to me, See you tomorrow, Rowan. Yes, Rowan. How could he? Was it because all these acts in front of my grandma got him mixed up? Or is it because she's always on his mind? <sighs> Never mind. It's none of my business. The next day, I was sick of strolling around the campus, so I went to class with Rowan and Maida. Rowan's right. They seemed really close. During the lesson, both of them listened attentively to the lecturer, then turned to discuss with each other. Maida also patiently explained the part Rowan didn't understand to her. Hey, what are we going to have for lunch? What's good in the canteen? You will take this course next year too, so focus. And then they got back to their discussion, as if I was invisible. Ugh. How frustrating. Hey, are you jealous? <laughs> Don't be, we're just friends. Why did she say that? Jealous? That's absurd. Still sulking? How about we go to the cinema tonight? I'll help you two. And here we are. As planned, I would sit next to Maida while Rowan would be with Paul. Sounds good. But 
when Rowan was about to settle next to Paul, Maida immediately took that seat. So he didn't want to sit next to me, or he didn't want Rowan to be with Paul? Either way, he obviously didn't have feelings for me. <sighs> as soon as the movie ended, I rushed out of there, just to catch some familiar sight of... Grandma and Dad again! She started nagging and insisted on escorting me home. Why are you still out here at this hour, Rowan? There was a lot to prepare for the wedding. Now the wedding's back on? Oh dear, you two. A groom-to-be shouldn't be playing around like this. Paul? Why don't you pair me with Maida like before, Grandma? After all, we were back to our former partners. I'm with Paul and Maida with Rowan. Well, it's just a fake wedding, so it doesn't matter who I was marrying to, right? But what was this uneasy feeling? And then, it's like Grandma had telepathy to hear my wish. Right before the ceremony started, her memory suddenly reset. What are you doing sitting here? It's time! Get up there! She dragged Maida to the altar and told the best man Paul to step aside. Oh, how cute. <laughs> and everything after that was like a dream. I walked down the aisle. Maida gently looked at me and sincerely made the vow. His acting was flawless, while I was buzzing with nerves. Sensing this, he gently held my hands to calm me down. I... I... do. The crowd burst into applause, and among them I spotted Grandma's joyful face. Despite the exciting moment, I didn't let myself forget another important mission, which was helping my big sister to get a boyfriend. So I threw the bouquet to Rowan and winked at Paul. But weirdly, she didn't seem happy about this. That evening, after all the guests left, I went to look for Maida. To be honest, I really wanted to know if he felt the same as me. Here he was, but... Why did he look so agitated? I was about to call him, when out of the blue he bolted to punch. Paul! Repeatedly! You jerk, stay away from Rowan, got it? What's going on? They're fighting because of Rowan? So Maida really was pretending at the ceremony. He liked Rowan, not me. Didn't you say you're just friends with Maida? What's all this? Friends don't get jealous when someone else is flirting with you. Orla, it's not what you think. Knew it. She thought she could fool me again. I turned around and was about to chase after Paul to check on him, but someone's hand grabbed mine. It was... Maida. Paul is not as kind as you think he is. Turned out, the reason why Rowan was awkward around Paul was because he always tried to touch her. Not to mention girls on social media were calling him out for taking advantage of them and cheating on them. Both Maida and Rowan knew it all, but they tried to put up with it through the wedding. However, he kept crossing the line. So today, Maida decided to teach him a lesson. So how I acted at the movies that day and just now was to protect my friend, not because I'm jealous. I didn't know he did so much for my family. Orla, how come you're here? Isn't it still the school year? And also, your parents are so weird. When did they make up with each other? Oh, she called me by my name. She even questioned who Maida was. Her memory seems to be perfectly back. Thinking our grandma had recovered, Rowan quickly called our parents. We were over the moon thinking a miracle had happened. But then, the doctor crushed our newfound joy, saying it was a phenomenon called terminal lucidity, meaning our grandma didn't have much time left. None of us wanted to believe it. But there was nothing else we could do but make the most out of the precious little time we had left with her. I also decided to put college on hold to live with grandma during her last days. Each morning, we would go for a walk together as I listened to her stories of the old days and then share with her some of my fondest memories. Mom and Dad still bicker and then make up. Some things never change. <laughs> but Rowan and I are getting along much better. Turns out we have more in common than we realized. And Maida, he still comes over to visit Grandma. Then one day, Maida was saying goodbye to me when Grandma suddenly shouted out loud, Where do you think you're going? Still got loads to prepare. You think the wedding is a joke or something? Wedding again? We froze and looked at each other, till Grandma yelled at us a second time. But this round, maybe Maida and I wouldn't need to act anymore. Because when I asked him if he was ready to take a vow again, he replied, Of course, Orla. I'm always ready to say those words to you every day. It's not here. Not there either. Where can it be? It's not just any shirt. It's my most prized possession. It has Kendall Jenner, my idol's autograph on it. 
Granny, your t-shirt was dirty, so I cleaned it for you. Come have a look. Oh, snap. I rushed over to see my precious shirt neatly piled on top of the fresh laundry. No, 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 no. The autograph's completely gone. Grandma! That's right. The person responsible for this unwanted blank shirt is my grandma, who just moved in with us after Granddad passed away. At first, it seemed exciting because my memories about Grandma were all from my happy childhood with her. But now I'm taking it back. She's a literal disaster. You know what? She is getting on in years, but still wants to learn to use social media. My mom even bought her a brand new iPhone 14. Meanwhile, her dear daughter was stuck with this lame iPhone 8. <sighs> Honestly, all she needed was just one of those brick phones that can only take calls. With her forgetfulness, she'll forget all her passwords. So it's best to just log in with my iCloud. After all, this phone will become mine anyway. Oh, that's quite a handsome young man. You think so too? Indeed, Josh's attractiveness is second to none. He's every girl's dream man. And yours as well, right? As if I stood a chance. He's notoriously cold, and none of the girls from school seem to interest him. Well, that probably was the only time we shared the same thought. Otherwise, we're always arguing about all kinds of things, especially the way I dress. She didn't even bother asking me before sewing up all my favorite ripped jeans and then left a dress that she'd made on my bed with a note. This adorable dress will suit you much better. I used to love her handmade dresses when I was five, but who even wears anything like this these days? That's not all. She nagged me all the time for straightening my hair instead of keeping it naturally frizzy, since it's supposedly cuter. And guess what? It's actually her who I'd inherited my natural hair from. Bet she didn't know it was the reason I had to grow up with my classmates saying stuff like, You're actually quite pretty, but it's a shame about the hair. And, How come you don't have straight hair like your parents? Are you adopted? Those hurtful words made me hate my hair with a passion and wish for beautiful, smooth, straight hair, like Kendall Jenner's. So of course, I'll keep straightening it every day, no matter what Grandma says. Thankfully, those complaints will finally come to an end tomorrow, as I'm going back to school after summer break. Yay! Huh? What's everyone buzzing about? At that moment, the teacher walked in and announced that our class will have a very special new student. And then, a very familiar figure entered my class. It was... My grandma? What on earth? Did she get lost on her way to bingo or what? How humiliating. Maybe if I stayed deadly still, she wouldn't spot me, and no one would know it was my granny. Oh, my sweetie pie, you forgot your orange juice. All eyes were on me. Good grief. Someone help me disappear from this planet, please. After class, I had to sneak out as fast as I could to avoid having lunch with my grandma. But my best friend Lloyd wouldn't quit teasing me. Suddenly, I heard someone laughing loudly across the room. Grandma? But who is she sitting with? Wow, Joe has quite a peculiar taste in women. He ignores every single girl in this school, but is now completely smitten over your granny. Jeez, why is she bothering him? Joe must have felt uncomfortable. I quickly went over there, apologized, and pulled my grandma away. On the way home from school, my grandma recounted her day just like a little kid would. Do you know that they have vending machines in the hallway with all kinds of snacks? That's genius! And oh my, the campus is big. I almost wet myself while searching for the restroom. <laughs> Tell me which part of this is funny again? It only proves that someone her age belongs in a nursing home, not a high school. I needed to talk to mom. So when she was finally alone in the kitchen, I immediately asked her, how exactly did Grandma end up in my class? It turned out that when my parents invited Grandma to live with us, she told them she would, but only if she could go to school. I think it's a lovely idea. It means she won't be lonely at home all day, as you'll keep her company. Besides, she spent her whole life taking care of our family, so it's our turn to look after her, right? Yeah, I suppose Mom raised some valid points. But who knew that Grandma could turn my school if upside down like this? She clung to me all day, ate whatever I ate, listened to the music I listened to, and even hung out with my friends. Worse still, she told them all embarrassing childhood stories about me. How I used to eat toothpaste because the ad said it was edible, and how I incubated eggs myself to see if I could hatch a chick. But that's not the worst part. She broke my hair straightener, so now I'm stuck wearing this stupid hat. How annoying. Hey, hey, breaking news. What is it this time? Jose has found the girl of his dreams, and she's here at our school. No way! No girls have caught his eye before. 
Why now? Ah, uh, Franny, what on earth? I looked down and, oops, I just accidentally turned him into Sully from Monsters, Inc. Sorry, my bad. Okay, let me see. As Lloyd told me, this was the girl Joe's got to know through Tinder before she mysteriously vanished. Moore, 17 years old, goes to my school and... Wait, she only has this picture? All I could see was her frizzy brown hair. Out of nowhere, someone snatched my hat. That must be Lloyd trying to get back at me for the paint job earlier. I tried to grumble at him, but only saw Grandma with my hat in her hand. Franny, your hair is so beautiful. Why cover it up? And also, these clothes. The dress I made for you goes far better with your hair. Enough. There's no way I'd let anyone see me with this hideous hair and granny outfit. Please, Grandma. Leave me alone and don't cause me any more trouble. This is my school and having you around is embarrassing. She looked shocked and was about to say something, but just left without another word. So, it's been a week since we last talked. It seemed that I was no longer her concern as she made new friends. So it's good for both of us, right? Suddenly, I heard a deep voice behind me. Hi, Franny. Can I talk to you about something? Wait, this voice? I immediately turned around to see Joe standing there, smiling at me. Oh my, this is the first time Joe's ever asked to speak to a girl. All the envious eyes are on me. I'm the luckiest girl here. Has he finally seen my unique charm? The thing is, I happened to see your curly hair the other day, and you look quite like the girl in the picture. I wonder if you are... Oh, he didn't come here because of me. Um, sorry, but I'm not Moore. I could see the disappointment on his face. He apologized for getting the wrong person, but before leaving, he smiled and told me, By the way, you're pretty with that curly hair. Really? That frizzy hair that I've gone out of my way to hide? Can't believe someone out there, besides Granny, actually likes it. A few days later, I arrived at school to a frightening scene. Jose was hand in hand with Amy. Turns out, she had come forwards as the mysterious girl. Let's see, 17? Check. Curly brown hair? Check. And her last name is Moore. There's no mistaking it. But I kept wondering, what does Jose like about this notorious wild girl? Her clique, which now included my dear granny, are always playing dumb tricks for attention. Look, she's no different from a traffic light now that she's friends with them. Once, their group even turned the library into a runway. Obviously, this quickly reached the supervisor, but, well, only my grandma was slow enough to get caught. Thanks to that, she received a ticket to the principal's office and they called in... My mom! Don't you find it ridiculous that a person this age is still getting scolded by the principal? School is not the place for grandma at all. Performing art requires a bold personality, girl. I might be old, but my spirit remains youthful. You know what? I'm going to participate in the Rise to Fame contest as well. I think I may just win. I turned to my mother with begging eyes, but only received a forced smile and a, just let her do what she wants. You'll lose anyway. Why bother? How about you sign up too, and we'll see who wins? Ha! Huh. Fine. Challenge accepted. I'll defeat you easily, Granny. Just wait and see. Finally, Rise to Fame, my school's annual competition, arrived. Each team of three will participate in different rounds, with the two best teams going to the final. First round, handball was a piece of cake for us. Having two sporty types on the team helped with that. As for Granny's team, which consisted of herself, Jose, and Dolly Amy, they were eliminated almost immediately. <laughs> After sports was a Sudoku round. Each team will compete against one another. Whoever solves the puzzle first wins, which should be a breeze because I used to spend rain-filled afternoons playing this game with Granny as a kid. On the other hand, Amy was complaining to the organizing committee that this round was a joke, since Sudoku was so outdated. The more she talked, the more it showed that she's terrible at math and numbers. So it'll be like taking candy from a baby, right? But I forgot Granny was on their team, and unexpectedly, Jose was also very quick-witted. It didn't take them long to solve such a difficult puzzle. Seeing them hugging and celebrating pissed me off. Losing to them by a mere second was the real stinger. Focus, Franny! We had to beat them in the countries and histories round to win. Just a few more minutes till the final round. I was about to leave the waiting room when suddenly I heard a ding coming from this phone left on the chair. It's grandma's phone. But wait, she knows how to use Tinder? Curious, I opened it and 
On the screen were all the messages from Jose and the mysterious Moore. Why does Grandma have this account? And why is Jose convinced Amy isn't who he's looking for? I immediately went to look for my grandma and found her in the corner of the stage wing. But as I approached her, she pulled my hand in and signaled for me to keep silent. <laughs> I thought you let that annoying old hag join the team as a joke. Who knew she'd be so helpful? You'll win easily. Yeah, right? I even heard that history is her strength. I just need her to finish this last round, then I'll kick her out in a heartbeat. The whole group burst out laughing. I nervously turned to look at Granny, but she didn't show any sign of anger. So what will my grandma do next, you ask? As soon as the final round began, she stood up, took the mic, and announced, I want to withdraw from the competition because I will never let two-faced people get the better of me. After that, she left, and the whole audience started to make a fuss, while Amy's face turned pale. However, the real shocker was when Jose also came on stage. Me too. I don't want to be in a team with a liar. Then he walked away as Amy chased after him. The audience buzzed, and the organizers announced that this meant our team had automatically won the competition. I rushed home right after the award ceremony to find Grandma ruminating in the garden. I quietly sat down next to her and put my hand on her shoulder to console her. She looked at me, gently smiled, and started telling me stories I'd never heard before. I discovered that she fell pregnant at 16 and dropped out of school. Her friends weren't very nice to her, so she'd never resumed her education. So now she had time, she decided to go back to school to experience her lost youth. That's why, Franny, you should never let others' mean words get to you. Cherish what you have, because there are still people who love that side of you. What she said was really touching, and it reminded me of Jose's compliments on my hair. Granny, so what about the Tinder account? Oh, I know you really like Jose, so I created an account to learn more about him so I could help you. Turns out, that profile picture was Grandma when she was younger, hence the similarity to me and Moore actually was her maiden name. I hugged her and profusely apologized for my poor behavior. She gently patted my head, smiled, and said she'd take me to a secret spot. The next day, I returned to my naturally frizzy hair and put on the dress Granny gave me. It wasn't trendy, but it fit me perfectly, and weirdly, I felt kind of confident wearing it. My grandma and I happily walked into a book cafe when I spotted Joe's. I've brought the person you're looking for here. We both looked at her with questioning eyes. You mean, turned out there was still one thing she hadn't told me, that the alias Moore she put up on Tinder was all based on my preferences, my hobbies, my habits, my taste in music, etc. She'd been collecting everything about me to text Jos. <laughs> I had to let him know there's an interesting girl like our Franny out there, right? That was why Jos didn't feel as compatible with Amy. Then the intelligence round confirmed it, as he and the mysterious girl both had one thing in common, a passion for Sudoku. In the end, everything was cleared up. Grandma is still attending my school, and I actually don't mind it anymore. She brings in homemade cakes for me and my friends, tells us interesting stories about the old days, and gives out the best advice. Most importantly, she made me realize that being me isn't so bad, frizzy hair and all. Almost forgot, you're also wondering what happened between me and Jose, huh? Well, I think you should see for yourself. Hi, I'm Donna, an influencer extraordinaire and soon-to-be supermodel. My family are my biggest supporters. Look, there's my sister Charlotte. Even though my parents are busy running the family corporation, they buy me whatever I want. This includes this spectacular dress for the upcoming Elite Model Look Contest. Girls, get ready! We're eating out tonight! Yay! Charlotte just helped Dad secure another business contract, so it's time to celebrate! At the restaurant, Mom, Dad, and Charlotte walked ahead while I showed my 329,587 followers around. My fans even commented that I should compete for Miss USA. Suddenly, someone bumped into me, causing me to drop my phone. Oh no! My live stream's ended, and it's all his fault! Idiot, you ruined my live stream. Now my fans will think I'm rude and unfollow me. Are you walking with your eyes closed? Sorry, I didn't mean to. Let me make it up for you. Donna the Fabulous? Okay, you've just got one more follower. What a jinx. He better stay out of my sight. But as soon as I reached our table, I saw his face again. Why is he here? Donna, this is Matthew, our new finance director. Oh, how important. But not as much as live streaming, right? 
Who does he think he is? Charlotte even laughed at his stupid joke. Speaking of which, Donna, you're going to study business from now on. Time to stop those modeling, live streaming things. What? But why? You've always supported my dreams before. But Dad just ignored me and chatted with Matthew. Dad was being so unreasonable. Everything was fine until that Matthew guy showed up. Charlotte comforted me and suggested we attend business classes for me while I prepared for the modeling contest. What a brilliant idea! Oh, I love my amazing quick-witted sister! I then put all of my focus into practicing for the contest. But Matthew kept on disturbing me with his nonsense. He even sent me a picture of wedding rings saying, Are these okay? Think they'll match us? I frantically called him to ask him what all the gibberish was about. Hasn't your dad told you yet? We're getting engaged and taking charge of the company together. What on earth is this guy saying? Since when was I expected to marry some guy I barely knew and take over a business I had no interest in? Dad should have some explanation for this. Upon arriving home, I confronted Dad, but he just sighed and said he was planning on telling me himself. But you can't just dictate my career and who I marry. Donna, I only want the best for you. But Dad, Donna didn't even attend her business classes and is still indulging in her nonsense fashion club. How can you expect her to handle the company? Oh no, why is she telling him that? Was she trying to help me? She's right, Dad. I have no interest in business at all. I can't. If that's the case, then you can start as vice president and get some hands-on experience. And you, Charlotte, you'll be Donna's personal assistant and support her. No! This is not how you want it to turn out. Dad used to love us both, but now he didn't even listen. Ugh, yes, Charlotte, my savior. She would surely know what to do. I can't believe it. I've tried so hard to prove myself, only to have everything given to a simple-minded fool like you. S simple minded That's what you really think of me? Well, I guess I just gotta take my new position to show her how simple-minded I am then. So the next morning, I dolled up and strutted to the company lobby under a different name, Miss Vice President. Huh, look at those gawking eyes wishing they could escape from the boring suits. Matthew was there too, and... was he... Laughing? Suddenly, my heel got tangled up in my dress and I tripped over. What a disaster. Matthew offered me his hand and asked if I was okay. Who needs his help? And all the silly chatters? Just wait and see. And by that, I mean now. Matthew introduced me to the company's core members and announced some new strategic goals for the company. ROI, margin, accounts. Jeez, what kind of language is he speaking? After what seemed like an eternity, he asked if anyone wanted to add anything. Aha! I, of course, couldn't miss a chance to show my leadership. This office is seriously lacking some colors. Violet blinds would be a good start, and some motivational pictures really help boost productivity. Oh, you mean putting up motivational quotes? Oh, please, no. Motivation comes from the all-time fashion greats. You know, Bella Hadid, Tyra Banks, Kendall Jenner... Everyone gawped at me while Charlotte furiously signaled me to stop. Everyone here is so boring. Ugh, all right, I'll stop then. My first day was then followed by tedious meetings and schedules. Everyone was talking gibberish and making me sign a bunch of papers. But every cloud has a silver lining. And for a foodie like me, that's dinner meetings. These people really know how to enjoy life, don't they? But before I could even have my first bite, they all started asking me about proposal this and project that. Fortunately, Matthew was there to save the day. Honestly, he seems pretty good at his job, and he's quite attractive when focused. Oh yeah, work. I gotta contribute my own talents at work too. So, the next day, I put the sign on my door, then sat back and watched my favorite fashion show. Ooh, look at those dazzling dresses. One day, I'd be walking the runway in a gown like that, not sitting here surrounded by confusing numbers and papers. Later, when I opened the door, an endless line of people was already waiting for me. Jeez, can't this company with all these brilliant brains function without me? Right then, Charlotte came dragging me away. What happened? Oh gosh, I didn't know that my computer was connected to the meeting room's projector, so everyone had been watching Project Runaway with me. Matthew was in the conference room too. Why didn't he fix it? Okay, everyone. We should thank our cute boss for giving us a lot of ideas for our problems. He finished the meeting and let them out, but Charlotte was still standing there fuming at me. Cute? There is nothing cute about it. 
Don't get any wrong ideas that he likes you. Wait for me, Maddie. What is with that attitude? Oh, right. I've seen the gooey-eyed look she gives Matthew. Does she have feelings for him? Before I could pry further, I was sent to Millen for another stupid meeting. Feeling bored, I watched a fashion show to kill time when someone startled me from my side. I personally think this collection is overrated. Oh, sorry if I scared you. I'm Brian. He then gave me his business card and, wow, he's the CEO of a modeling firm in France. Are you coming to the fashion week too? I wish. I actually came for work. <sighs> oh, what a pity. There's a modeling contest this week. I can tell a true beauty like you is destined for the crown. I missed so many chances to be on the runway. If I make it this time, maybe mom and dad will see how serious I am about modeling. This is too amazing of an offer to refuse. Brian, I'm coming with you. At the show, I made sure my phone was off so I could truly immerse myself in all the glamour of the newest fall collection. Brian then kept his word and took me to the audition. I was super nervous at first, but unexpectedly... Everyone else looked so amateur. Meanwhile, I strutted like a pro, confident that this time I would get an offer. But for now, reality was calling. <sighs> as soon as I turned on my phone, a zillion missed calls from Dad and Matthew popped up. This screamed trouble, so I quickly got Brian's contacts and returned home. There, Charlotte went all banshee shrieking mode on me, accusing me of being irresponsible and selfish for skipping the important meeting. Dad, if you don't do something about this, Donna will destroy the company you've worked so hard to build. That's right. But instead of yelling at her, you should have been there to help out. I'm so disappointed in you, Charlotte. Oh God, Charlotte's face turned pale immediately. Dad should be scolding me, not her. Feeling a little bad for Charlotte, the next day I went to talk to her, but it sounded like she was arguing with someone inside. I walked in to see Matthew sitting there with loads of pictures of Brian and me. We're still, in Charlotte's words, it looked like we were dating. A few photos can't change the fact that we're getting engaged. He then grabbed my hand and pulled me outside, leaving a stunned Charlotte behind. How are you so sure that I'm not seeing someone else? It's just a feeling. Or maybe it's just my hope, because I... What did he mean by hope? And holy shrimp, why is my heart beating so crazy? What a day. I thought it was finally over when Dad slammed the pictures of me and Brian down in front of me. He was so mad at me, he decided our engagement would be tomorrow instead of a month, as planned. But I haven't mentally prepared for this. So here I am, at my engagement ceremony, waiting for my fiancé to arrive. Ha, <laughs> just kidding. Actually, Brian called me last minute to tell me the best news ever. A fashion brand had chosen me as their ambassador. I needed to fly over for some paperwork. Thanks to him, I successfully escaped the engagement and flew to Milan to meet up with him. Finally, I got to pursue my long-repressed dream in my favorite city and not pay heed to my dad's ridiculous orders. Yay! As I woke up the next morning, I eagerly reached for my phone to call Brian, but... Huh? Where was it? I looked at the nightstand, but my passport, my wallet, and all of my stuff had disappeared. I dashed to the reception asking for Brian's room, but they all shook their heads saying there was no one by that name staying there. Frantic, I used their computer and checked the website for his phone number, but it kept saying error. Then I look up any information about the contest, but found zilch. How could he do this to me? I trusted him. Now I'm in a foreign country, all alone, and with no money. What am I going to do? I can't just call dad to come get me, and neither can I call Charlotte. There's only one person I could contact right now. So I called Matthew, and he flew over immediately. We were walking along the Navili Canal to get some dinner before heading back. I thought he would be furious right now because I ran away from our engagement, but he was just quiet the whole time. So, is it okay for you to suddenly come here? I mean, work and stuff, you know? It's alright. You come first. Everything else comes after. That's sweet of him, but I needed to make sure he didn't get the wrong message. I called for your help, but that doesn't mean I want to get engaged. I'm... I'm not ready to come in. At first, I wanted this marriage to happen, but now I'm not so sure anymore. Oh my. Did me running away from the engagement upset him that much? As we stepped through the door, I saw Mom, Dad, and Charlotte waiting for us. Charlotte instantly bombarded me with her dolphin frequency yelling, saying how much they worried about me, how irresponsible and terrible I was. You should have won an Oscar for your acting, Charlotte. Unfortunately, your partner played you this time. Acting? And what partner? Turns out Charlotte was the one behind all of this. 
She hired Brian from the beginning to make me look bad in my parents' eyes. She also made sure my engagement with Matthew didn't go as planned. Everything played out just as she'd wanted, but she didn't think Brian's greed would get the best of him. He called Matthew, saying he was holding me for ransom. And during the call, the idiot fraud accidentally brought up Charlotte. We were all too shook to even speak when Charlotte burst out crying. You're right! It was me all along! She's never done anything useful, yet got everything meant for me! Mom! Dad! If you needed someone to take care of the company and marry Maddie, why her? Why not me? You haven't told them anything this whole time? I was still processing everything when my dad sighed and said, I was going to tell you both when the time felt right, but seeing you pitting against each other like this hurts me so much. Actually, Donna, we're not your biological parents. Turns out, Dad was my parents' private lawyer and the company belonged to my real parents, not to Dad. But then, my parents got into a terrible accident, and during their last minutes, they gave the company, and me, over to him. They asked Dad to raise me properly and arrange for me to marry Matthew as a part of their deal with Matthew's parents. Growing up and seeing me so passionate about modeling, Dad was going to let Charlotte run the company and let me live my life how I wanted to. But then Matthew and his family showed up and insisted we get engaged according to the deal. Dad had no choice but to respect them and carry out my parents' will. So, my current beloved mom and dad are not my actual family? Worse still, my biological parents had both passed away. Donna, we hope you understand. Though we're not related, we have always loved you as our daughter. This is very hard for us, too. I looked at mom and dad, the ones who had always loved and cared for me. Mom, dad, just like you two. I'm sure my parents would want me to do what makes me happy. Though, I am the lawful heiress of the company. I can only do harm to it. So, I hope you understand, and let Charlotte take over it. She's a better suit than me. That's right. You cannot force someone into doing something they don't like. Neither can you force someone into love. Woohoo! No more boring office job. Instead, I've put all my energy into elite model look. And here I am today. You've got this, Donna. I confidently strutted down the runway with Mom, Dad, and Charlotte cheering from the audience. And when I finished my part, I joined my family and nervously waited for the MC to announce the chosen ones. Samantha Friske, Amelia Davis, and Donna Rossi! Yes! I've made it! I've been waiting for this day for so long! Suddenly, I spotted Matthew coming towards us. Congratulations, Donna. I knew you'd get it. Thank you for coming. I know love cannot be forced, nor should I rush it, but... Whenever you're ready. Donna, will you go out with me? How about... now? Hello, hallway! Hello, classmates! I, Taya, have finally returned to school after three months. What the what? What's with everyone's goggled-eyed looks? The boys were all slipping off their chairs. Had I morphed into Jenna Ortega at the summer break or something? Oh, turns out there's a new girl standing behind me. Are you the new student? Let me show you around. Oh, boys, weren't they forgetting something? Their existing girlfriends? Which they were only with because of me. Anyway, I'm Taya, aka Stalking Lord, ruler of all information in school. Just give me a full name and some of your allowance money, and I can dig up the 411 on your crush. These idiots only impressed their girlfriends due to my incredible talent. And now they're all over this Mira girl? <laughs> Do they have no shame? Unlike me, once I like someone, then my eyes don't wander. The one and only Adonis of my heart is Colin. He's so sweet. He has this shining halo when he plays basketball. And most importantly, he's flawlessly handsome. But I hadn't told him how I felt. Because, as you can see, he's not short of admirers and nothing seems to impress him. So I was still trying to figure out the best way to get on his radar. My everyday joy was quietly observing him from afar. But wait! What happened to his car? What's with all the silly scribbles? Finn, the troublemaker, and his minions were standing nearby laughing at my Colin. Ugh! Those notorious rebels for some reason seem to thrive off tormenting poor Call. So you're a vandal now, huh, Finn? Look who's talking. Oh, I see. The new team captain? Finn threw the spray can at Call, then left. Why isn't Colin doing anything? Maybe he doesn't want to rise to such petty idiots? Then let me handle this. I know exactly what his Achilles heel is. A few days later, I secretly put a small box in Finn's locker and watched on as his minions gathered around excitedly gawping at it. 
They two must be amazed that their big man's finally getting a love confession time, huh? Finn smugly opened the box, but then freaked out and threw it in the air. The cockroaches escaped and ran rampant across the hallway. It's pure chaos. <laughs> a bunch of wimps. Oh, he finally discovered the note I attached. Finn was fuming and shouted that he would find the instigator. I could see Colin walk off from the crowd. If only he knew what I did for him, he'd be so impressed. But nope. Finn took zero notice of my warning and continued to bother Colin. Ugh, I can't let him get away with this. That gremlin needs to learn some serious lessons. Finn always stays late after school to sneak up to the terrace and practice skateboarding. So I schemed to get him stuck in the elevator. He'd be trapped there for at least an hour. Enough time for that claustrophobic peacebreaker to read the second warning letter and apologize for what he did. There he is. Time to leave. I ducked my head, gently stepping out of the elevator. When suddenly, Finn grabbed my wrist and pulled me back. How long are you going to play Beauty Saves the Hero, huh? How could he know? It turns out that Finn's minions happened to see a bunch of pictures of Colin decorated with hearts in my locker. And they even found a list of Finn's weaknesses in my bag. Just one cute puppy can make him scream like a little girl? Suddenly, the elevator stopped. Oh no, I didn't mean to trap myself here like this. With this punk. You did this too, right? You've gone too far. Tell you what. Be my servant for a month, and I'll let you off. <laughs> As if. Stay away from Colin, and I'll stay away from you. You don't even know his true face. I doubt you'd still like him if you did. Anyway, I heard that the principal is desperate to get his hands on the cockroach culprit. Your choice. Do you want to pay the price to him, or to me? Ugh, he's got me. But what does this Finn know about Colin that I don't? Okay, just one month. And don't think it'll be easy to be my boss. Heh, <laughs> nice. Then I have first order for you already. And so, I had to sing and dance to entertain him until someone came to rescue us. In the following days, the bossy Finn kept sending me on dumb errands and rebuking me for every single thing. Hmm, there's no denying that this guy was a gifted painter. It's just a shame about his lousy personality. As soon as someone spotted us, he immediately skated away, leaving me running after him. He didn't study either, so I had to do all his homework. He even made me run around the school just to buy him some snacks. This time, Finn asked me to put this cake on Miss Watterson's desk. Did he finally do something nice? No! How foolish I was! Turns out he'd injected food coloring into it to prank our teacher, and he took a video of me placing it on her desk to slander me. You have to stay after school and film me every skateboarding session, or else I'll tell her. That guy has gone too far. Is he forcing me to work over time now? And since I have been busy being Finn's puppet, I didn't even have time to look after Colin anymore. I've tried several times asking why he hates Colin that much, but every time I mentioned it, he got all touchy. And there's one more thing that intrigued me. There was something up with Finn's leg. Hey, does your left leg hurt? It's perfectly fine. Don't act like we're close. Why do you have to be so sensitive? No wonder no one likes you. Oh, please. Being liked by someone like you would be a nightmare. The only girl on my level in this place is Mira. She's sweet and gentle. Besides, she's only been here five minutes and she has already established an art club. <laughs> he can't compare the Little Mermaid to Princess Merida. We're basically just different. Heard you're the one who knows everything at school, right? Find out about her for me. It might be our last mission. For what? Are you going to put her in trouble too? <laughs> well, this proves that a know-it-all like you doesn't know anything about me. It's just like you don't understand your Colin at all. Just give this to Mira. Remember to do it in a private place so she doesn't feel awkward. Oh, he even drew the card himself. This side of rebellious Finn really surprised me. But come to think of it, if Finn was too busy with love, he wouldn't torture me anymore. Under Finn's instructions, I went to school early the next day to find his muse. As soon as I saw Mira, I immediately chased after her, but was she talking to Colin? Why do they look so sneaky? I don't get it. Why do you want to hide this? I've just transferred here. I don't want your harem bothering me. So in front of others, just pretend we're strangers, okay? Huh, <sighs> fine. See you after school then. I'll pick you up. Okay, see ya honey bun. What was that? Are they dating? This isn't good news at all. 
Right at that moment, Finn came to ask me, Why haven't you passed her the card? What happened? Then I told Finn what I just saw. Colin offered to pick her up after school, then Mira even called him Honey Bun. Looks like my first love has ended before it had even began. But they don't even have the guts to make it public? Colin doesn't deserve Mira. But that's okay. I've got a plan. So according to his scheme, basically, we needed to separate them. Then I'd take Colin, and Finn would take Mira. That day after school, I assisted Finn in flattening Colin's tires. I know, I hated causing trouble for my beloved Colin. But this is the only way to give Finn an opening to offer Mira a ride because she was in a hurry to get to her ballet class. The day after, Finn helped me draw Colin as a partner for my chemistry project. During class, I was super excited and nervous when sitting next to my Adonis, until I noticed Colin writing something to Mira and leaving it on her lab table. I immediately dragged Finn to steal the letter. Don't forget, today we have to pick Tommy up, and Mom asked what you wanted for dinner. Was their relationship progressing this fast? Colin had already introduced Mira to his family. We couldn't let the two just simply meet up like that, so we stalked and followed them to a preschool. Upon catching sight of them with a the little boy, Finn suddenly blurted, What? Don't tell me that boy's their son. No, it's just Colin's little brother. Tommy, age 5.5. Favorite color? Green. Favorite food? Ice cream. Anyway, my eyes itch seeing them happy with each other. Let's sabotage them. So, we kidnapped the kid. Oh, it's not as bad as you think. We just took him for ice cream without telling Colin and Mira. That kid doesn't look worried at all. Why be worried? You saved me from those boring two. So, Tommy, do you know that Mira is having dinner with your family tonight? Um, yeah. Mira, she stays at our house every day. What? what? Another chocolate ice cream, please, then I'll talk. I gave him a new cup of ice cream right away. This kid was smart. Well, she stays with us because she's our cousin. What? what? Why did she call Colin Honeybun then? Maybe because mom calls him by this embarrassing Nate name all the time. Right at that moment, Mira rushed into the ice cream shop in panic. So you guys are cousins? Why hide it from everyone? It's because she's afraid people will find out that her parents are bankrupts. No, that's not true. Don't listen to that kid. Yes, it is. I heard you telling Colin all about it. Okay, that's the reason. But please, don't tell anyone about this. I quickly said that we would agree if Mira went on a date with Finn. The guy looked shocked. Didn't think I could be so quick-witted, huh? Surprisingly, Mira smiled and said she didn't mind going on a date with Finn anyway. She always thought he's kinda cute. Huh, so everything is just that easy? <laughs> that means my servant life will finally end here. Only then did Colin rush over. Tommy, why are you here? Oh, I just got lost so they saw me and bought ice cream to calm me down. They didn't kidnap me at all. Oh, Tommy. So that's how Mira and Finn got their first date. The deal between me and Finn is considered to be over then. But why do I feel so empty instead of relieved? Suddenly, something hit my leg. Aren't you supposed to be on a date? I knew my servant would still be waiting for the boss right here. Turns out, their date was a bit... odd. Mira didn't seem to like Finn's antics, and Mira's neediness wound Finn up. So this is definitely their last date. I laughed out loud, but Finn quickly stopped me. How about you and Colin? Still don't have the guts to confess? I may have successfully protected my Adonis, but I don't know why. It's like there's something that keeps holding me back from confessing. Finn immediately took me to get a makeover. He's a very enthusiastic consultant and seems to be very knowledgeable about Colin's tastes. When seeing me in the new dress, he even said I looked cute. Okay, where had rude Finn gone? What do you think of me and Colin becoming a couple? What do you mean? I mean, you used to say that Colin was terrible and all, but now you're willing to help us get together. Actually, he's not that bad, and I'm doing this for you. You like him, right? Yeah. I like Colin, right? Hmm, why did my feelings seem vague? What had gone into my head? The next day at school, when I appeared in front of Colin with my new look, he seemed impressed. And you know what? He even suggested going on a date with me. Um, yay! But I'm not sure I could last a whole date in this tight dress and super inconvenient high heels. During our date, Colin was just as sweet and caring as I expected him to be. But weirdly, it didn't move me at all. 
Is it because I'm too focused on keeping balance on these stupid high heels? Taya, do you want to be my prom date? If he'd asked me this a month ago, I would have leaped in joy and sung out yes. But right now, I just stood there, silent. <sighs> I see. I really like this version of you, but your previous look might suit you better. You seem more comfortable and carefree around Finn. Oh, Finn. I didn't realize he has always been on my mind till now. I'd long to be free of him, but now he's all I could seem to think about. Curious, I asked Colin why Finn didn't like him, and I finally found out the truth. Turns out, they used to be friends and were once on the basketball team together. Finn was the best player back then, but at one practice, he was doing a high jump when Colin also jumped to get the ball. They collided and Finn injured his knee, which ended his professional basketball dreams. Colin then became the star player. Meanwhile, Finn turned rebellious and had resented Colin ever since. Feeling guilty still, Colin was willing to suffer all the tormenting Finn had done to him. That's why Finn always caused you trouble. He still called me a makeover though, to match your style and become a thing with you. Oh, that explains why you seem to be exactly my type. He knows me too well. But, Taya, you like Finn, right? If so, you should go and tell him. That hit me hard. Maybe I've been trying to deny it the whole time, but I really did feel the most comfortable around Finn, and I miss hanging out with him. But he seems to like someone soft and girly, like Mira. Guess you're gonna find it out for yourself. So I gathered all my courage and came to the skate park to find Finn. He saw me from afar. Hey, how was your date? You look the part. I didn't expect you to be back this early. I know about the secret between you and Colin and how you lost your opportunity of becoming a professional basketball player. If my bestie hates him, I hate him too. Actually, I don't hate him. I just hate how useless I am. Don't talk about yourself like that. You know that you're really talented, right? You're the first guy I've met who can skate, paint, and, well, is good-looking at the same time. Be more confident, will you? You know, no one's ever seen nice things like that in me before. But this doesn't matter, because you like Colin. I did like Colin, but we realized we're not actually a very good match. After an awkward silence, we both raised our voices at the same time. I you know, think- Oh, you, you go, go first. first. I'm listening. I think I like you. Um, well- that was I was about to say. Let me be your servant this time. Finally, my first day at school has come. Yay! This special occasion called for my favorite hoodie. Super cool, right? <laughs> but then, out of nowhere, I was blocked by a group of boys and their cheesy pickup lines. No time for monkey business, but they wouldn't let me go. Hey, do you know who I am? I'm... Everything suddenly went blurry. Oh no! My glasses! I stumbled around trying to grab them back, but got shoved to the floor. Everyone scram. Give me that. I looked up and vaguely saw my hero offering me a hand. He gave me my glasses and I profusely thanked him. But he just gave me a cold look and walked off without saying a word. Strange. Oh, by the way, I'm Hazel Palmer, 17 years old. But I'm not here as a student, but a teacher. Yes, you heard it right. Not to brag, but I'm kind of a genius. <laughs> I even got offered a position in my college's research project, which I have rejected to pursue my dream of becoming a high school teacher. So here I am on my very first day of fulfilling it. First, I was introduced to the other teachers, but unlike what I had in mind, they just threw me judgy looks. Luckily, after the meeting, a young teacher named Rebecca kindly welcomed me and even tipped me off about some of the rebels at school. Now time to meet my students. As soon as I finished my introduction, the whole class immediately turned into a beehive. Miss, how about we continue this lesson at the movies tonight? Mullet, Paris Nose, this guy must be the notorious Lucas that Rebecca warned me about. Please, as if you'd date someone who would wear such a goofy hoodie. Yeah, who let a weeaboo teach here? Jeez, I didn't expect this reaction. I tried to restore the silence, but to no avail. Ugh, I'm out of patience. Quiet! or else you'll all get Fs. Thank God it worked. Whew, that'll show them who's in charge. But here comes another problem. No way! There's gotta be someone who's really here to study, right? Okay, who is our class's top student? Ethan! Ethan. Ah, didn't he help me in the hallway? But it looked like he didn't recognize me. Okay, let's see. Ethan, right? Could you solve this equation? 
A equation? N no, equation. I suppose spelling is a bit hard for a numbers person like you. And the whole class burst into laughter. Jeez, this guy was unbelievable. Hmm, how about the second best student? Cassie Santago? That name sounded just like my old classmates. I turned to the corner where an arm reluctantly raised. Oh my, it's her! So good to see a familiar face here. But why is she avoiding me? That afternoon, while walking to my car, I saw Cassie and her friends picking on a girl. Upon seeing me, they immediately ran away, but I managed to catch Cassie. Cassie, since when did you become a mean girl? None of your business. Report me to the principal if you like. Then she strutted away, leaving me standing there confused. Since when had the sweet Cassie ended up on the dark side? Turned out, not long ago, Cassie's father passed away in an accident, leaving her to live with her stepmother. This must left her in so much grief that she put up this cold, reckless facade as a defense mechanism. That's so sad. So, to make Cassie feel included, and also to improve this whole class's performance, I came up with a master plan. More homework. Not finished? Minus points. And every lesson will come with a gift. A test during recess, and I asked Cassie and Ethan to help the other students. But when I called Cassie to the board, strangely, she couldn't do a simple equation. At first, I thought that it was just her being rebellious, but during the test that day, I noticed her copying Ethan's answers. Does that mean all her A's were from cheating? Not only that, the even shocker thing I found out was that Ethan was her stepbrother. After class, I came to talk to her, but she didn't pay me any attention. Cassie, I know the secret behind your A's. High scores mean nothing when they're not from your own hard work. But out of my business. <laughs> You're as much my friend as you are a proper teacher. I'd be pleased to tutor you. How about today? See you in the library after school. As if I care. Her words did hurt, but I guess she was just trying to keep her cold image. So I still waited for her, but she never showed up. No matter how much I tried, Cassie ignored me and kept cheating. During the midterm test, she even blatantly snatched Ethan's paper. It's true she's my friend, but I couldn't let it slide any longer, so I dismissed her test. That had to be done. <sighs> On the same day, while I was in the library searching for materials, I heard familiar voices talking. Ms. Palmer is way too much. She even dismissed Cassie's test today. Can you believe this? Why can't she be understanding like you? Cut her some slack, Sadie. She's just doing what she thinks is best. So that's what my students really thought of me? After everything I did to try and help them, yet all I got back was bad-mouthing? And Rebecca was so nice to defend me like that. No wonder they liked her. <sighs> a few days later, the unexpected happened. Cassie, Lucas, and a few others came and asked for extra lessons. Finally, they started to have another eye on studying. But little did I know that it's just a ruse from my dear students to turn the following days into a nightmare. And the instigator was Lucas, I supposed. One day, I almost fainted upon finding a huge ant nest inside my bag. The other day, my pants were stuck to the chair with some gum. <sighs> Fortunately, Ethan always showed up in time to help me. He's such a riddle. Unlike before, not only did he try to defend me in class, but he also helped me carry my textbooks. But I didn't expect him to care that much. One time, I saw him at the car wash where I worked part-time. I quickly hid behind a car, but Ethan just kept walking towards my wash box. I'm here to see you, so no need to hide. Let me give you a hand. After my shift, Ethan took me home. We talked a lot, and I felt comfortable enough to tell him about my mom's health condition and how I took this part-time job to cover her hospital fee. This side of him was far different from the normal, and it was heartwarming. Suddenly, we noticed an elderly lady who seemed lost, so we offered to take her home. And guess what? She's the grandma of the notorious Lucas. I was truly surprised by how much of a rebel like Lucas cared for his nana. I could tell he really loved her a lot. Poor boy. She's the only family he got now. Lucas, I know studying is not your thing, but have you thought about how happy your grandma would be if you at least tried? Since then, Lucas stopped causing me any mischief, and so did the other students. Now they could even do simple math themselves. Baby steps. <laughs> Seeing my effort finally bore fruit, I set up a parent meeting to report students' progress. Halfway through my presentation, a photo of me cosplaying as Sailor Moon popped up on the screen. Oh my god, why is it here? How dare you let this childish thing teach my kids? Then she stormed off, followed by everyone else. I thought I finally had my students on my side. Turns out I never did. Then came the last straw, my mom's medical test results. I couldn't help but cry, letting all my bottled up emotions out. 
Then, suddenly, a hand laid on my shoulder. What's wrong? My mom's health turned worse, and she needs an urgent operation. I'm sorry to hear that. It's all gonna be okay. Be strong, Miss Palmer. I appreciated him comforting me, and when I felt a bit better, we decided to leave. But the door was locked from the outside. It must have been a prank from my students. Again! We tried banging the door and screaming for help, but eventually gave up and waited for someone to come. This quiet atmosphere sure does have a way of making people open up, and I got to know about Ethan. Seemed like both of us have problems with our beloved family. What's yours? I... I have a sister. You know who. That I really adore. But no matter how hard I try, she always builds a wall between us. Oh, wasn't this the first time Ethan talked about his personal life? He always put on a cold and distant mask. But I knew deep down he had his struggles too. I was so absorbed in his story that I forgot about being locked up and gradually fell asleep. Until a buzzing sound startled me. And countless phone cameras were pointing at us. Guys, check your phones. Look what Miss Palmer and Ethan have been doing this whole time. Oh my! A bunch of photos of me and Ethan have been uploaded on the school website. And from some angles, it looked like we were... Kissing! Oh no! I tried to explain, but they just threw me a disgusted look. And why was Ethan just standing here saying nothing? This soon reached the principal. He told me there would be a case hearing for inappropriate relationship with a student. How was this even possible? As I dragged my feet to the principal's office, suddenly I heard familiar voices shouting. Why did you do that? I told you to find her weakness, and look what you got. Nothing. I've done everything I could. What else do you want? Everything? Then why is she still here? As long as she's around, she messes up our cheating stuff, and mom will get my head chewed off for being useless at school. Or is that what you want, brother? What? So... Cassie had been pulling the strings this entire time? And Ethan was her puppet, befriending me just to please his sister. I knew she hated me, but did Ethan have to be so heartless too? Cassie then caught my eye, so I ran away. I was still trying to process this when I walked in to see the school council glaring at me. You're an insult to the teaching profession, which leaves us no choice. I was ready for the worst, when Ethan rushed in. Stop! It was me who deliberately jammed the classroom's lock to get back at her for being too strict, but I accidentally got stuck too. There's nothing going on between us. And so, I was cleared of all charges, and Ethan ended up in a week-long suspension. Why did he do that after all? After such a long trial, I drove around town to blow off some steam, then saw Cassie fighting with a security guard. I found out that Cassie stole a bracelet and was refusing to call her parents. The guard said he'd have to call the cops, so I came forward as her teacher to bail her out. Cassie asked me why I helped her, but I didn't bother explaining myself and just left. Since that day, Cassie didn't attend the extra classes. After his suspension, Ethan returned with his offhand attitude. <sighs> no time to worry about those two. My mission now was to prepare my students for the upcoming finals and regain my prestige. Luckily, they started to take studying seriously and invested a lot in these tests. One day, when I walked into class, some students even asked me to help solve advanced exercises. Two weeks later, when the results came, my excited students all rushed over to me. Miss Palmer, thanks to you, the questions were the same as the ones you showed us the other day, so it only took us a blink to finish. What are they talking about? Before I could understand, the principal summoned me to his office. As I entered, he angrily showed me the math sheet that I was allegedly teaching in the extra class. What kind of work ethic allows leaking exam questions, Miss Palmer? Leak the test? Me? No! Please! No more excuses. You're fired. No, no! They can't punish me for something I didn't do. Someone must have framed me. I asked my students where they got that piece of paper, and they said it was already on the table when they came to class so Cassie and Ethan must have been behind this. Good job, Ethan, for putting up their remorse act just to set up a bigger plan to humiliate me. Okay, then. They won. Unemployed and desperate, with hospital bills to cover, I had to work full-time at the car wash, as well as taking night shifts at 7-Eleven. But besides the measly wages was a bonus of rotten eggs and tomatoes, scornful looks and snarky comments saying I didn't deserve the teacher title. <sighs> The scandal truly turned my life upside down. Then, when I was at the hospital with my mom, suddenly Ethan rushed in and said he would clear my name. Clear my name? Wasn't he the one who put dirt on me? 
What was he playing this time? With nothing to lose, I reluctantly went with him. He led me to the school's control room. The principal was also there. Then I saw Sadie standing on stage. Ethan said it was her who discreetly put the math sheet on the table. What? But, Rebecca? I distributed the test like you said, but I'm scared. What if someone finds out? Don't worry, now that Miss Palmer's fired, who else can dig this up? I'm only taking back my position as the beloved teacher who can take cover for y'all. No, I have to tell the principal everything. Who would believe you? I would. Furious, I rushed over to the stage and confronted her. Rebecca, I thought you were my friend. How could you? Don't ask me. Ask your phony self. Weren't you just trying to get the students to like you? What nonsense was she saying? I'm just doing my part of being a good teacher. How could she be so selfish and cruel? Out of jealousy? Miss Palmer earned her students' respect with her pure heart. Look at you. The so-called love you have comes from buttering them up with all your lies. That's why they turn stubborn and make light of studying. I never knew you were that kind of person. How could you call yourself a teacher? The principal couldn't hide his rage, fired Rebecca, then apologized to me and offered me my job back. But after all these troubles, this school had completely drained me. I couldn't take it anymore, so I refused. As I was wiping away my tears, Ethan came to my side. Miss Palmer, I'm sorry for everything I did. I just tried to please Cassie, but now I know I was only hurting you. I've already known about that. I was about to leave when a group of students led by Cassie approached us. Then Ethan told me it was Cassie who helped him with the plan to bait Rebecca into admitting her actions. Sorry for all the horrible things I did to you. Please stay. We've learned a lot since you moved here. Please don't leave us. Such a crazy term. I ended up staying. I mean, this is my dream job after all, and I'm not one to give up that easily. I also talked to Cassie's stepmom about her studying. Turns out, she didn't realize her strict approach was causing a rift between them all. Cassie, Ethan, and their mom had a talk, and now they seem to understand each other better. I was so happy for them, and we became friends after that. Time flies, and now my students, or my friends, to be correct, graduated, and would soon fly off to pursue their own dreams. Suddenly, Ethan dragged me to a corner. So from now on, we're no longer teacher and student, right? I guess, but so... But could you still teach me? Teach me how to love you. I and Pearl were playing our favorite, playing Disney princess. You have to be the princess this time, Ruby. We're gonna make a perfect Elsa and Anna. No, I'm going to be your knight, fighting all the bad guys and protecting you, milady. Then a maid knocked on the door with a phone in her hands. That might be my parents. Ruby, the school called again. How on earth could you get all these words spelled wrongly? What kind of nurse is spelled with a Z? I am really trying. It's all right, Bay. Studying isn't for everyone, and she might be of a sport type. Sweet Pea, could you just try a little more next time? Good girl. We have to go now. Bye. I know you can do this. You just need to keep practicing. You're perfect, just the way you are. Hi everyone, I'm Ruby, and this is my little sister, Pearl. Since my parents were always away for business trips, it's always just been me and her growing up together. You already know I was terrible at studying, but Pearl was nothing like me. She was a genius. What are you doing, Pearl? For God's sake, it's 6 a.m. The sun is still sleeping, and you should be sleeping too. Absolutely not. Today is my first day in high school, and I have to make a good impression. My streak must continue. Straight A since 2015, I know, I know. As if your valedictorian title isn't impressive enough. I might be Ruby, the dumb kid who couldn't read half of a word, but it doesn't matter, because now I am Ruby, the awesome soccer captain. Yes! Go, Ruby! That's my sister, everyone! I led the school soccer team to win multiple trophies, and I also aimed at the varsity scholarship myself. Studying was still a nightmare, but I gradually accepted that I wasn't born for studying, but for soccer. So, all was well. So, that morning, I was walking with Pearl on her first day at school, when Beth and her clique approached us. Hey, Ruby, ready to flunk your junior year? Aw, oh, Beth, still salty because Coach left you on the bench yesterday? My advice for you would be to learn how to actually play soccer. Unfortunately, some of us have other things going on to focus on, like our brains. Oh, oops, you don't have one. You can't understand. Sorry. <laughs> 
Boo-hoo, funny. That's Beth on my soccer team who always messed with me like everyone else. But all's good now, as I had my dear sister studying in the same school as me. Uh, sis, I found my class. I have to go now. Bye. The next day at school, we had a new English teacher. Ruby Walker, could you read the summary on page 10? Oh, screwed. Oh, dear. Is that your thinking face? Didn't know you were capable of that. Sorry, teacher, but she can't read. <laughs> you know what? My thoughts today on the book can be summarized into the classic song by the amazing Taylor Swift. So the haters gonna hate, 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 but I'm just gonna shake, 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 shake. Shake, shake it, it off. off. Shake, shake it, it off. off. Just then, the entire class was in a frenzy, and everyone was singing, dancing, like they were in the Eras tour. The teacher was so upset and tried to calm everyone down, but I was sent to the principal's office immediately. First trouble in the junior, huh, Ruby? Listen, both you and I know how much you mean to the team, but unfortunately, it is not enough anymore. New district laws state that students must average at least C-minus to be eligible for the varsity scholarship. What? But I'm the most qualified for it! I am sorry, but until you can move grades from whatever it is right now to a C-minus, you're off the team to focus more on your studying. Beth is now our candidate for the scholarship, and she'll take over your place. Beth? That girl who scored just five goals all season when I had scored 20? The world was really getting crazy. No way was I going to watch my passion get taken away from me that easily. I'm going to study hard. Right! I'm going to ask Pearl to tutor me. Ah, speak of the devil. Hi, Pearl. You know her. I heard she's kicked out of the soccer team because she's too dumb. Oh, no. Uh, no. How scandalous if our valedictorian did. <laughs> well, maybe now wasn't a good time. That night, I dozed off at my desk writing four words over and over again. I am not dumb. The news had spread that I got kicked off the team because of my grades, and the kids at school were vicious with their insults. Like I didn't have enough issues already, Pearl started to avoid me like a plague, as if she's ashamed of me. So I couldn't ask her to tutor me either. It's like the whole world was going against me. The district superintendent was visiting our school, and the principal chose the two smartest kids to give a welcome speech. Pearl and a new student, Joe, from my class. So he started to hang out a lot at our home to prepare for the speech. Hey, Ruby, need any help with tomorrow's test? Nah, I am famously unteachable. Don't waste your time on me, and Pearl is waiting for you. It's all right, she can wait. Let me help. Surprisingly, for the first time in my life, I felt like I could actually learn. There was something about the way he taught me that made me absorb knowledge naturally. Like, he understood me and my struggles. Hey, there you are. I've been looking for you. We have a test coming, so I was helping Ruby. And we have a huge speech to give on Thursday. You know nobody actually listens to those speeches, right? Anyway, I trust you to come up with something incredible. Pearl stormed out angrily, but the only thing in my mind then was that I actually could learn. Hey, Joe, please teach me more. Joe could help me learn to get better grades, and then I could finally get back to my team and win the scholarship. Later that night, when I was practicing some test questions Joe gave me, Pearl barged into my room. I am not comfortable with you spending time with my boyfriend alone. Boyfriend? I didn't know you were dating. Well, not yet. Not with you hogging him and not giving me space to charm him. Oh, sorry. I was just excited. Joe is an incredible teacher. I was actually learning. Yeah, right. Of course you're capable of that. Pearl left my room, and it felt like a knife went through my heart. Since when did she think of me like that? Like everyone else does. But she always believed in me. The next day was the speech, and even though I was heartbroken, I still went to support her, and I clapped the loudest after she gave her amazing speech. Thank you for granting us a chance to study here. On behalf of the whole school students, I'll try my best to bring glory to our school's tradition. Wonderful speech, but I think before you bring glory to our school, shouldn't you teach your beloved sister, Ruby Walker, how to read first? I mean, maybe your dummy sister could learn one or two words from you before getting kicked out of her school. <laughs> The whole auditorium burst out laughing, and my rage was filling my body. I lunged at Beth and grabbed her stupid ponytail until she screamed so loud, even the moon could hear her. Teachers and guards tried to separate us, while other students were excitedly shouting and cheering. In the middle of the messy crowd, I saw Pearl look at me in shame. I ran to her, but she just brushed me off. It's you again. Joe isn't enough, and now you try to steal my spotlight as well. What? No, no, I never meant harm to you, I swear. But she didn't listen to me and angrily stormed off. 
I was so angry at my brain for always failing me and at everyone. Now my dream was gone, and my dear sister hated me as well. I fell down on the bleachers and saw Beth wearing my captain's armband, gathering everyone to the morning practice. She waved at me with the widest smile. It was hard to fight the tears, so I let them fall. There you are. I was looking for you to continue our classes. I don't think we should continue our classes. Why? Pearl, she doesn't like you and I together, and she will hate me for this. Oh, uh, I will talk to her, but this is more important. You need to get back on the pitch. But you're just wasting your time on me. I'm just an idiot who ruined others' lives. No, you're not an idiot at all. You're dyslexic, like me. I've noticed your symptoms for a while, but I wasn't so sure. But I am now. Dyslexia? There is a name for this? So I'm not... I'm not stupid? No, you just learn differently. I will help you and teach you all the things the specialists taught me. My mind was fuzzy. I gave Joe a hug without thinking. I felt relief spread all over my body. I wasn't dumb. I was dyslexic. At home that night, I searched everything about dyslexia and even took an online assessment when suddenly Pearl barged in. You told Joe I like him? Um, yes and no, but not like that. Well, thank you so much. He just called to tell me he just considered me a little sister. And you know what? I saw you hugging him on the bleachers this afternoon. So you were going behind my back all this time? What a sister. Don't ever speak to me again. Pearl stormed out and kept her words of never speaking to me. It broke my heart to see us parting like this. Luckily, Joe comforted me and helped me stay focused on studying. Now that I knew what my problem really was and how to fix it, I improved every day. The letters didn't make me dizzy like before anymore, and our effort finally bore fruit, as I got my first B- ever on a test. And in no time, I got called to the principal's office. It has been incredible watching you turn your grades around. Good job, Ruby. I always knew. You're a gem like your name, and you just need some sharpening. Welcome back to the team. <laughs> Thank you! I ran out of his office and rushed to find Joe immediately. We did it! I'm back on the team! Congratulations, but that was all you. You did it, Ruby. That moment would have been perfect if I could celebrate with Pearl. I knew she didn't want to talk to me, but I really wanted to share this with her. But upon seeing me and Joe, she was just shooting me death rays. The joy in my mouth instantly turned to ash. I just wished we could go back to the old good days together. But I had no idea how. <sighs> With me coming back to the team, I reclaimed the captain title and was eligible for the varsity scholarship. And of course, my impressive record easily got me the win. Congratulations to Ruby Walker for winning this year's varsity scholarship. Come on stage. Thank you very much, sir. All I can say is I'm immensely grateful for this chance, and I'm going to try my best. Hi, everyone. Ruby's too shy, so she did prepare a speech here. Good luck. Except that I didn't prepare this note. Everyone in the audience all locked eyes on me, and I was sweating all over when I took the paper from her. Today is trim, trim, um... Oh, our scholarship winner just had a little problem. She just couldn't read. I hope it won't affect the scholarship much, will it? I ran out of the hall before the tears blurred my eyesight. Joe was racing after me, but Pearl caught me first. Pearl, I don't really have time for your mocking now. No, no, I'm sorry. Joe told me about your dyslexia, and you should, you know? Yeah, but it can wait. But you need to go back there right now. You've tried so hard to earn this place. I wouldn't let my sister waste it just because of Beth's dirty move. Joe also nodded encouragingly at me. Pearl was right. It's my passion. It's me or no one who would claim it. So I walked back into the hall. And as soon as I appeared, everyone started to laugh. I stepped up to the mic, took a deep breath, and read the speech. There were still some stumbles and stuttering. But I went through to the last word. Hi, everyone. I'm Ruby. You all can see I have some troubles reading because I have dyslexia. <gasps> all my life, I have struggled and accepted that I was stupid. Until now, I know I'm not. I still haven't figured out how to read big words, but I am not ashamed of my struggles anymore. And no one should bear the troubles I've had. Dyslexic people like me need others to help us, to acknowledge our difficulties, and to be given a chance like any others. We're not dumb. We just need a different way to learn. 
Thank you. The hall was completely silent for a while before standing up for an ovation. I walked away from the podium to see the scowling look on Beth's face. I went backstage, where Pearl gave me a warm hug. I'm so proud of you, and I'm sorry. I should have helped you, but instead I've been horrible or even cruel to you. Yeah, yeah, you've been forgiven. So now could you please just stay quiet? I just want to hold my little sister longer. I miss this hug. I miss Pearl. My Pearl. It's good to have my sister back. And just like that, my life was back to normal. Uh, of course, with some changes. There is something I need to tell you, Ruby. I'm sorry for the Joe thing. I let jealousy take over me and said bad things to you. But I realized he and I would never become a thing. But you would. Huh? No, we're just friends. Are you? Now come with me. Then she dragged me to the living room, where Joe and another boy were standing. Then she placed my hand in Joe's. Joe, could you please take care of my sister when I go out with my boyfriend? Uh, um, <laughs> sure. Hi there, I'm Flora, Portside High School cheerleading captain and beauty pageant queen. My natural beauty and charisma mean that everyone's drawn to me, but hey, I don't make it easy for them. I only allow a select few to get close to me, as I can't be seen associating with just anyone. Only my classmate Nina is pretty enough to have the coveted position of my BFF. Birds of a feather flock together, right? My high school life was perfect. But then, in the space of one day, that all changed. The principal, Mrs. Harrington, told me that due to my cheerleading abilities, I'd won a scholarship to the ACL Academy, a boarding school for the athletically gifted. And I was leaving today! Huh? This made no sense. I mean, I don't even do sports. I rushed straight home to discuss it with my mom and found her sitting on the couch surrounded by a load of shopping bags. Yep. She'd already spent the scholarship money before I'd even found out the news. I know mom loves money, but how could she make such a huge decision about my life without discussing it with me first? Ugh. Looks like I had no choice but to leave Portside High behind and go to this stupid sports school. Whatever. I'm a skilled cheerleader after all. It'd be a breeze, right? Wrong. This new school sucked. On my very first day here, I was woken up at 6 a.m. and forced to run five laps around the stadium. God, are these people superheroes or what? How are they able to run and laugh at the same time while I'm panting like crazy? I didn't have time to catch my breath when the teacher made us move to the gym to lift weights. After three hours in the hellish gym, I barely had time to digest my lunch before they steered me into the volleyball court. Yep, that's the sport mom had registered me for. Ugh, this stupid sport. Finally, nighttime arrived, and I managed to crawl my aching body back to my dorm. God save me from this living nightmare. Suddenly, the door opened, and in stepped my three roomies, aka my volleyball teammates. Honestly, I don't even know if I could call them girls or not. One has super short cropped bangs, one doesn't say much and shuffles more than walks, and one wears clothes so baggy they resemble a tent. Obviously, I'm way out of their league. And you know what they all have in common? They're always sweaty. So gross. Come to think of it, I have to go take a shower ASAP. Otherwise, I might turn into one of them. Fresh out of the shower, I called Nina and blurted out how exhausted I was and how much I missed our school. Who are you? You must be so tired. Oh, by the way, I have some amazing news to tell you. There's a city beauty pageant coming up and I'm representing the school. What? But I won the school beauty contest. Yeah, you did. But you don't attend Portside High anymore, so seeing as I came second, they've given me the spot. Too bad, as you definitely would have won. What? How unfair! I was still in shock when the dorm supervisor stormed in and took away my phone. Uh, yeah, I forgot to mention. This school even has a strict 10 p.m. phones away and lights off rule. It's all because they believe health is the most precious thing for an athlete. I tossed and turned all night. This beauty pageant was massive, and there's no way I could miss it. But I'm not at Portside High anymore. Instead, I'm stuck in this dumb jock academy. Hmm, if only I could get out of here. Huh, that's right. I have a brilliant idea. I need to get expelled. So, I decided to skip practice and go cause some havoc for three days straight. 
I poured paint into the pool, cut off the badminton strings, deflated all of the soccer balls, and of course, I made sure that the security cameras caught it all. And as expected, the principal eventually called me into his office. Yes, this was the moment I was waiting for. Soon I could pack and get out of here. Only the rest didn't exactly go to plan. If it had not been for Mrs. Harrington. Two laps of frog jumps around the soccer field. Now! What? Frog jumps? I hate those things! Why couldn't he just kick me out already? But wait, what does Mrs. Harrington have to do with this? After my punishment, I needed to vent. So, hugging my aching thighs, I called Nina to complain about my failed plan. And she just burst out laughing. <laughs> oh, Flora, those outdated tricks were never gonna work. You have to do something bold, like... <gasps> Oh my god, Nina is a genius! The next night, following Nina's instructions, I sneaked out when everyone was asleep. That's right, I'm going to wake the whole school up with these firecrackers. I lit one in the dorm's backyard, then ran to hide behind the bushes. Three, two, one, and... silence. Huh? I went back to check and saw that it had gone out. What's wrong? Is this one broken? I tried again and again, but the same thing happened each time. As if a ghost did it? Just the thought of it sent chills down my spine, so I sprinted right back to my room. Okay, so not only had my plan been a massive fail, but it had left me super tired. Needless to say, this morning's run was not fun. Zombie alert! Hmm, how come they look even more exhausted than me? Hey, have you guys heard about the doomed jock? He's the ghost in the dorm's backyard. Allegedly, he attended this academy years ago, and he exercised himself to death right there in the dorm's backyard. So now, he haunts it. What was she talking about? Could it be the one who messed with me yesterday? Was the doomed jock? I couldn't just give up like that. I needed to figure out a way to get out of this awful place before this ghost got me. Hmm... How about starting a fight? I heard that the fencing team and basketball team were the two toughest groups in the school. So, I sprayed paint on their fencing masks and punctured all of the basketballs, and left a fencing sword at the scene. Then I wrote both teams an anonymous letter. Sunday, 2 p.m., abandoned building near the back gate. When Sunday came, I hid in the abandoned house and waited for the two groups to arrive. Look at their tense faces. This was going to be fun. I quickly called the cops, and then took advantage of the chaos to blend in with the feuding teams. I almost got punched in the face when, fortunately, the cops got there just in time, causing everyone to frantically flee the scene. I happily ran to a cop. It's me! I started this fight! But, to my surprise, the cop just asked if I was hurt. Then he hurriedly chased after the gang. Only then I realized that if I wanted to be caught, I had to do exactly what they did. Run away! Oh, man. I was staggering my way back to the dormitory, feeling deflated, when I spotted the fencing and basketball teams coming my way. Freaked out, I looked around for a place to hide, but there was only one car parked on the side of the road. With no other way, I ventured to open the car door, and, oh, it wasn't locked. I quickly jumped in, hid under the back seat, and lay completely still. At that moment, the car door swung open, I closed my eyes and braced myself to catch some hands when suddenly the car revved up and left. Looking up, I saw the principal sitting in the driver's seat, whistling happily. Oh, so it was his car. After a while, the car stopped in front of a bar in town. Didn't expect a serious man like him to go to such places. But wait, an underage student being caught by the principal here would surely get me expelled, right? With that in mind, I hurriedly followed him, but at the door, a security guard stopped me and asked for my ID card. I had no idea what to do when suddenly a strange guy appeared. Hey, cutie. Need an ID card? How about this? I'll lend you a fake ID to get in. In exchange, you must go out with me tonight. Sounds good, huh? Well, I didn't plan on sticking around for long, as I would just get in, find the principal, and get caught right away anyway so I nodded in agreement. I was about to take the ID card from him when someone yanked me back and pushed me into a cab. My roommates! 
What are you doing here? Do you know you've just ruined my plan and- Ruined? Who's the one causing trouble here? Do you honestly believe that if you get expelled like that, your old school will take you back? <sighs> Fat chance. Huh? How'd you know that I'm trying to get expelled? Turns out my roommates overheard the conversation between me and Nina. It was them who extinguished my firecrackers in the campus backyard, then made up the doomed jock ghost story to make me stay away from there. Then, when the basketball and fencing team searched for me, it was them who lied that I was with them all day so I could get away with it. But what did you do that for? Don't get us wrong. We didn't do it for you. We did it to protect the school's reputation. Then they started telling me that, for the last few years, due to bad achievements, our school was on the chopping block to make space for industrial areas. The only way to convince the city council to keep our school was by winning the state's upcoming sports competition. We've all played sports for all of our lives. Sport is everything to us. If our school closes, we don't know where we'd go. That's why when we saw you being lazy and messing about, we couldn't just sit back and watch. Oh, I had no idea about this. Suddenly, I felt so guilty. I mean, of course I don't want to ruin their futures. I then also opened up to them and told them all about the beauty pageant. They insisted there must be a way to join the pageant without returning to my old school. So they searched around on Google, and guess what? Turns out the pageant accepts free candidates too, which means no school registration needed. What else could I wish for? I immediately signed up for it, and as a thank you to my new friends, I started making an effort at playing volleyball. I'm a tall girl, so my training position is a right side hitter. And you know what? There is this satisfaction whenever I was able to block a ball. Not gonna lie, this is much more interesting than I thought. That weekend, I went to the city to pick out some dresses for the beauty contest. I found myself immersed in racks of gorgeous gowns when a familiar voice startled me. How about this one, Mom? Stunning, sweetie. You're the most beautiful girl in this world. I don't know what possessed them to pick Flora over you. But no need to worry this time, as I have sent her far away. Yeah, that's where she belongs. I'll show them who's the true beauty queen now. What? No way! My old school principal is Nina's mom? And transferring me to the sports academy was part of her plan? Just so her daughter could go to the pageant? I was fuming. So as soon as Mrs. Harrington went outside to take a call, I walked straight over to confront Nina. I can't believe you're like that. Nina looked shocked at first, but then smirked as she said, Like what? Like someone who's far prettier, more talented, and crown-worthy than you? Thanks, sporty girl. I shoved past her and stormed out of there. Wait for it, Nina. We'll soon see who the real winner is. The next few weeks were crazy busy with volleyball practice and the pageant preparations. I may have only been a reserve, but I still wanted to give it my all to motivate the team. The sports competition soon arrived, and after two days of competing, the fate of the school came down to the final match. Our volleyball game! Talk about intense. It sucked it was on the same day as the beauty pageant, as I would have loved to be able to cheer them on from the player bench. But then, disaster struck. The girl who plays right side hitter sprained her wrist and couldn't play. The whole team looked so worried, and that made my heart ache. There was only one thing for it. I'd replace her. If I was quick, I could still make it to the beauty pageant afterward. Come on, Flora. Stay focused. Just one point left, and we'd win. Suddenly, the ball came flying at me. This was it. I hit it with all my might and... Score! We won! I was busy celebrating our victory when everyone suddenly asked me about the beauty pageant. Oh my god, I almost forgot. The match went on longer than I thought it would. My friends dragged me into the taxi, but when we got there, the show was already coming to an end. And worst of all, guess who was standing there wearing the winner's crown and looking all smug? Yep, Nina. Did you come to congratulate me? Thanks, bestie. Oh, you guys must be Flora's new friends. Hmm, that figures. How cute. Stop the act, Nina. Yes, they are my friends. They're not fake, and they're a thousand times more interesting than you. <laughs> Say whatever you want, but I'm a beauty queen now, and you're no longer at the same level as me. 
My friends started clenching their fists, so I quickly pulled them away before anything happened. Right at that time, an announcement came across the speaker. Attention, pageants. We've just discovered signs of voter fraud. Please stay inside the hall and await further confirmation. About 30 minutes later, the truth finally came out. Turns out, Nina's mom had paid for the voting texts. Needless to say, Nina had her crown taken off her immediately, and Mrs. Harrington also lost her principal job. <laughs> what goes around comes around, right? As for me, I'm not bothered about beauty pageants anymore. Instead, I have a new hobby, volleyball. Turns out I'm pretty good at it, and who knows, I might even become a professional player. And you know what the best part of all this is? I now have true friends by my side who I know will be willing to help me anytime and anywhere. Hi there, I'm Flora, Portside High School cheerleading captain and beauty pageant queen. My natural beauty and charisma mean that everyone's drawn to me, but hey, I don't make it easy for them. I only allow a select few to get close to me as I can't be seen associating with just anyone. Only my classmate Nina is pretty enough to have the coveted position of my BFF. Birds of a feather flock together, right? My high school life was perfect. But then, in the space of one day, that all changed. The principal, Mrs. Harrington, told me that due to my cheerleading abilities, I'd won a scholarship to the ACL Academy, a boarding school for the athletically gifted. And I was leaving today! Huh? This made no sense! I mean, I don't even do sports! I rushed straight home to discuss it with my mom and found her sitting on the couch surrounded by a load of shopping bags. Yep. She'd already spent the scholarship money before I'd even found out the news. I know mom loves money, but how could she make such a huge decision about my life without discussing it with me first? Ugh. Looks like I had no choice but to leave Portside High behind and go to this stupid sports school. Whatever. I'm a skilled cheerleader after all. It'd be a breeze, right? Wrong. This new school sucked. On my very first day here, I was woken up at 6 a.m. and forced to run five laps around the stadium. God, are these people superheroes or what? How are they able to run and laugh at the same time while I'm panting like crazy? I didn't have time to catch my breath when the teacher made us move to the gym to lift weights. After three hours in the hellish gym, I barely had time to digest my lunch before they steered me into the volleyball court. Yep, that's the sport mom had registered me for. Ugh, this stupid sport. Finally, nighttime arrived, and I managed to crawl my aching body back to my dorm. God save me from this living nightmare. Suddenly, the door opened, and in stepped my three roomies, aka my volleyball teammates. Honestly, I don't even know if I could call them girls or not. One has super short cropped bangs, one doesn't say much and shuffles more than walks and one wears clothes so baggy they resemble a tent. Obviously, I'm way out of their league. And you know what they all have in common? They're always sweaty. So gross. Come to think of it, I have to go take a shower ASAP. Otherwise, I might turn into one of them. Fresh out of the shower, I called Nina and blurted out how exhausted I was and how much I missed our school. Poor you, you must be so tired. Oh, by the way, I have some amazing news to tell you. There's a city beauty pageant coming up, and I'm representing the school. What? But I won the school beauty contest. Yeah, you did. But you don't attend Portside High anymore, so seeing as I came second, they've given me the spot. Too bad, as you definitely would have won. What? How unfair! I was still in shock when the dorm supervisor stormed in and took away my phone. Uh, yeah, I forgot to mention. This school even has a strict 10 p.m. phones away and lights off rule. It's all because they believe health is the most precious thing for an athlete. I tossed and turned all night. This beauty pageant was massive, and there's no way I could miss it. But I'm not at Portside High anymore. Instead, I'm stuck in this dumb jock academy. Hmm... If only I could get out of here. Huh, that's right. I have a brilliant idea. I need to get expelled. So, I decided to skip practice and go cause some havoc for three days straight. I poured paint into the pool, cut off the badminton strings, deflated all of the soccer balls, and of course, I made sure that the security cameras caught it all. And as expected, 
The principal eventually called me into his office. Yes, this was the moment I was waiting for. Soon I could pack and get out of here. Only the rest didn't exactly go to plan. <sighs> if it had not been for Mrs. Harrington. Two laps of frog jumps around the soccer field. Now! What? Frog jumps? I hate those things! Why couldn't he just kick me out already? But wait, what does Mrs. Harrington have to do with this? After my punishment, I needed to vent. So, hugging my aching thighs, I called Nina to complain about my failed plan. And she just burst out laughing. <laughs> oh, Flora, those outdated tricks were never gonna work. You have to do something bold, like... <gasps> Oh my god, Nina is a genius! The next night, following Nina's instructions, I sneaked out when everyone was asleep. That's right, I'm going to wake the whole school up with these firecrackers. I lit one in the dorm's backyard, then ran to hide behind the bushes. Three, two, one, and... silence. Huh? I went back to check and saw that it had gone out. What's wrong? Is this one broken? I tried again and again, but the same thing happened each time. As if a ghost did it? Just the thought of it sent chills down my spine, so I sprinted right back to my room. Okay, so not only had my plan been a massive fail, but it had left me super tired. Needless to say, this morning's run was not fun. Zombie alert! Hmm, how come they look even more exhausted than me? Hey, have you guys heard about the doomed jock? He's the ghost in the dorm's backyard. Allegedly, he attended this academy years ago, and he exercised himself to death right there in the dorm's backyard. So now, he haunts it. What was she talking about? Could it be the one who messed with me yesterday? Was the doomed jock? I couldn't just give up like that. I needed to figure out a way to get out of this awful place before this ghost got me. Hmm... How about starting a fight? I heard that the fencing team and basketball team were the two toughest groups in the school. So, I sprayed paint on their fencing masks and punctured all of the basketballs, and left a fencing sword at the scene. Then I wrote both teams an anonymous letter. Sunday, 2 p.m., abandoned building near the back gate. When Sunday came, I hid in the abandoned house and waited for the two groups to arrive. Look at their tense faces. This was going to be fun. I quickly called the cops, and then took advantage of the chaos to blend in with the feuding teams. I almost got punched in the face when, fortunately, the cops got there just in time, causing everyone to frantically flee the scene. I happily ran to a cop. It's me! I started this fight! But, to my surprise, the cop just asked if I was hurt. Then he hurriedly chased after the gang. Only then I realized that if I wanted to be caught, I had to do exactly what they did. Run away! Oh, man. I was staggering my way back to the dormitory, feeling deflated, when I spotted the fencing and basketball teams coming my way. Freaked out, I looked around for a place to hide, but there was only one car parked on the side of the road. With no other way, I ventured to open the car door, and, oh, it wasn't locked. I quickly jumped in, hid under the back seat, and lay completely still. At that moment, the car door swung open, I closed my eyes and braced myself to catch some hands when suddenly the car revved up and left. Looking up, I saw the principal sitting in the driver's seat, whistling happily. Oh, so it was his car. After a while, the car stopped in front of a bar in town. Didn't expect a serious man like him to go to such places. But wait, an underage student being caught by the principal here would surely get me expelled, right? With that in mind, I hurriedly followed him, but at the door, a security guard stopped me and asked for my ID card. I had no idea what to do when suddenly a strange guy appeared. Hey, cutie. Need an ID card? How about this? I'll lend you a fake ID to get in. In exchange, you must go out with me tonight. Sounds good, huh? Well, I didn't plan on sticking around for long, as I would just get in, find the principal, and get caught right away anyway so I nodded in agreement. I was about to take the ID card from him when someone yanked me back and pushed me into a cab. My roommates! What are you doing here? Do you know you've just ruined my plan and- Ruined? Who's the one causing trouble here? Do you honestly believe that if you get expelled like that, your old school will take you back? 
Fat chance. Huh? How'd you know that I'm trying to get expelled? Turns out my roommates overheard the conversation between me and Nina. It was them who extinguished my firecrackers in the campus backyard, then made up the doomed jock ghost story to make me stay away from there. Then, when the basketball and fencing team searched for me, it was them who lied that I was with them all day so I could get away with it. But what did you do that for? Don't get us wrong. We didn't do it for you. We did it to protect the school's reputation. Then they started telling me that, for the last few years, due to bad achievements, our school was on the chopping block to make space for industrial areas. The only way to convince the city council to keep our school was by winning the state's upcoming sports competition. We've all played sports for all of our lives. Sport is everything to us. If our school closes, we don't know where we'd go. That's why when we saw you being lazy and messing about, we couldn't just sit back and watch. Oh, I had no idea about this. Suddenly, I felt so guilty. I mean, of course I don't want to ruin their futures. I then also opened up to them and told them all about the beauty pageant. They insisted there must be a way to join the pageant without returning to my old school. So they searched around on Google, and guess what? Turns out the pageant accepts free candidates too, which means no school registration needed. What else could I wish for? I immediately signed up for it, and as a thank you to my new friends, I started making an effort at playing volleyball. I'm a tall girl, so my training position is a right side hitter. And you know what? There is this satisfaction whenever I was able to block a ball. Not gonna lie, this is much more interesting than I thought. That weekend, I went to the city to pick out some dresses for the beauty contest. I found myself immersed in racks of gorgeous gowns when a familiar voice startled me. How about this one, Mom? Stunning, sweetie. You're the most beautiful girl in this world. I don't know what possessed them to pick Flora over you. But no need to worry this time, as I have sent her far away. Yeah, that's where she belongs. I'll show them who's the true beauty queen now. What? No way! My old school principal is Nina's mom? And transferring me to the sports academy was part of her plan? Just so her daughter could go to the pageant? I was fuming. So as soon as Mrs. Harrington went outside to take a call, I walked straight over to confront Nina. I can't believe you're like that. Nina looked shocked at first, but then smirked as she said, Like what? Like someone who's far prettier, more talented, and crown-worthy than you? Thanks, sporty girl. I shoved past her and stormed out of there. Wait for it, Nina. We'll soon see who the real winner is. The next few weeks were crazy busy with volleyball practice and the pageant preparations. I may have only been a reserve, but I still wanted to give it my all to motivate the team. The sports competition soon arrived, and after two days of competing, the fate of the school came down to the final match. Our volleyball game! Talk about intense! It sucked it was on the same day as the beauty pageant, as I would have loved to be able to cheer them on from the player bench. But then, disaster struck. The girl who plays right side hitter sprained her wrist and couldn't play. The whole team looked so worried, and that made my heart ache. There was only one thing for it. I'd replace her. If I was quick, I could still make it to the beauty pageant afterward. Come on, Flora. Stay focused. Just one point left, and we'd win. Suddenly, the ball came flying at me. This was it. I hit it with all my might and... Score! We won! I was busy celebrating our victory when everyone suddenly asked me about the beauty pageant. Oh my god! I almost forgot! The match went on longer than I thought it would. My friends dragged me into the taxi, but when we got there, the show was already coming to an end. And worst of all, guess who was standing there wearing the winner's crown and looking all smug? Yep, Nina. Did you come to congratulate me? Thanks, bestie. Oh, you guys must be Flora's new friends. Hmm, that figures. How cute. Stop the act, Nina. Yes, they are my friends. They're not fake, and they're a thousand times more interesting than you. <laughs> Say whatever you want, but I'm a beauty queen now, and you're no longer at the same level as me. My friends started clenching their fists, so I quickly pulled them away before anything happened. Right at that time, an announcement came across the speaker. Attention, pageants. We've just discovered signs of voter fraud. 
Please stay inside the hall and await further confirmation. About 30 minutes later, the truth finally came out. Turns out, Nina's mom had paid for the voting texts. Needless to say, Nina had her crown taken off her immediately, and Mrs. Harrington also lost her principal job. <laughs> what goes around comes around, right? As for me, I'm not bothered about beauty pageants anymore. Instead, I have a new hobby, volleyball. Turns out I'm pretty good at it, and who knows, I might even become a professional player? And you know what the best part of all this is? I now have true friends by my side who I know will be willing to help me anytime and anywhere. I'm standing in the middle of the room wearing this extravagant dress and a glittery mask. All eyes are on me, but I can sense how ingenuine they are. This is supposed to be my sweet 16th, and yet all of these guests were complete strangers. Ugh, it's all that slimeball Gregory's fault. Actually, this OTT party was all down to him. Oh, hi, I'm Vivian, but my friends call me Viv. My mom, Jacqueline Mars, is one of the wealthiest people on earth. So I grew up thinking massive mansions, gigantic pools, and a floor entirely for toys was the norm. Well, at least I did until I turned 10. That day I was playing in my life-size dollhouse when I heard talking coming from the other side of the fence. I peeked over it and saw a woman and a girl around my age who looked kind of weird. Curious, I spoke up. Hey you, why do you dress so funny? Pardon? What did you say? You don't even have shoes on. That's so silly. You're the silly one. Bet you've never tasted this before, huh? So try it. Spoiled rich kids like you always look down on others. While in fact, you're no use to society. I just stood there dumbfounded as the security shooed them away. I never meant to offend her. I, I was just curious. So I rushed inside the house to find mom and ask her about this. Oh, honey, not anyone can be as wealthy as we are. That means you don't have to worry about a thing, sweet pea. Now go play so mommy can work, okay? Even to this day, mom's words still linger in my ears. I've grown to resent my family's wealth. I just wanted to be a normal kid. That's why, by the time I got to middle school, I convinced mom to let me transfer from my private school to a public one and wipe out everything about me online so no one would know about my influential family. I get the bus to school, buy clothes from thrift shops, and prepare my own lunch instead of bringing the gourmet dish the chefs make for me. A perfect normal life. Until Gregory, mom's so-called boyfriend, showed up. He sticks his big nose in everything. Thanks to him, mom wouldn't stop nagging at me about my clothing, my trashy public school, or how I gotta stop hanging out with the mediocre kids. Ugh, he is driving me insane. And to top it off, he gave mom the idea of throwing me a 16th birthday party. I hate attention. Mom knows this. But what Gregory wants, Gregory gets. This could be an opportunity to introduce her to society and gain new associates. It'd be good for her when she takes over business in the future, blah, blah, blah. Poof. Please. The only thing that man cares about is himself and his associates, not mine. In the end, I agreed to a masquerade ball, on one condition. Mom has to stop interfering with who I should or shouldn't hang out with, especially my friends at school. And that brings us to the present. Right when the host announces that it's time for... My first dance? Huh? My what now? Ugh, Gregory! I was confusedly looking around to find a partner when suddenly a hand grabbed me. Birthday girl, come dance with me. Ugh, what a creep. Let go! Can somebody help me with this? Suddenly a boy around my age appeared. Oh my, he has the most beautiful gray eyes I've ever seen. Excuse me, sir. I believe the lady has agreed to have her first dance with me. Thank you, handsome stranger. As we danced, I couldn't help but stare dreamily into those gorgeous eyes of his. We were about to leave the dance floor when he whispered in my ear, Wait here. I'll be right back. <sighs> Who would have thought a superficial party like this would lead me to my perfect guy? Suddenly, I heard a snapping sound behind me, and as I turned around, my mask fell off. Oh no, a paparazzi cut my mask string. I tried to cover my face with my hands, but it was no use. Luckily, Mum rushed over and hid me behind her. Sorry, everyone, but the party's over. We had a great time and hope to see you all again soon. Then she led me back to my room, 
while the security showed everyone the way out. From that moment on, my ordinary life ended for good. My face was plastered all over the internet as the billionaire Jacqueline Mars' daughter. Now everyone at school is looking at me funny. I don't get it, guys. I'm still the same old Viv. Oh, there my besties are. They would surely have my back, right? But nope. As I approached them, they went ballistic on me, saying how I don't trust them enough to confess about my actual background. So from now on, we're no longer friends. This is so unfair. I never asked for any of this. I wipe away my tears, trying to act like nothing happened. Huh? What's this? There's a note lying on top of my books that says, Hey, it's me, the guy from your birthday party. I'm so sorry for what happened to you. If you need anyone to talk to, text me anytime. Oh, so he's from our school? Wow. Just when I thought no one's there for me, he showed up again. But there's no name, though. Is he still playing this mysterious game? Okay, I'll just call him my masked knight then. From that day on, we texted nonstop. He just gets me. My family situation, my friends, everything. One time, he even secretly slid a Blackpink concert ticket in my bag, since I once told him that I was their diehard fan. Another time, he sent me a gift card to my all-time favorite ice cream store, Ben & Jerry's, just to cheer me up on a bad day. Aww. This ice cream tastes delicious, but I can't help wishing the Masked Knight was here with me. All I know is he has the most beautiful gray eyes and gorgeous black hair. Hmm. Oh, speak of the devil. Hey, I have a surprise for you this Valentine's Day. Hope you're as excited to see me as I am to see you. Finally, I get to meet the boy I'm crazy about. I can't wait. On Valentine's Day, I was in English staring out of the window and thinking about my masked knight. I wonder what he looks like. Ladies, I've brought your Valentine's roses. Here you go, Viv. This is it. It's gotta be from him. Happy Valentine's Day. Have a taste of the rose, then come meet me at the pool. X. I quickly unwrapped the candy, popped it into my mouth, then rushed to meet my dream man. Well, where was he? As I tried calling him, the room started to spin. I saw the outline of a blurred black figure, then... Ugh... My head is killing me. Where am I? And whose hand am I holding? Hold on. Those eyes. He must be. Thank goodness you're awake. Uh, are you the one who danced with you at your birthday party? In the flesh. I'm Jeremiah, by the way. I had higher hopes for our first face-to-face -face meeting, but oh well. <laughs> Turns out, he always knew I went to the same school as him but he was a bit intimidated by my family's influence, so he decided to get to know me via text first. He said the cops had found some sort of sleep-inducing substance in my rose candy. Before I could quiz him anymore on this, Mom barged into the room and hugged me. After making sure I was okay, she turned to Jeremiah and said, You saved my daughter. For that, I can never thank you enough. Please join us for dinner tomorrow night. Jeremiah seemed hesitant at first, but then he nodded in agreement. Hmm. The dinner did not go as planned. Between Mum's blatant interrogating and Gregory's menacing looks, I could sense Jeremiah's discomfort. Then when Jeremiah asked where the restroom was, Gregory insisted on showing him. When Jeremiah returned, he seemed flustered and made his excuses to leave. Gah. What had that annoying Gregory said to him? I quickly followed Jeremiah and apologized, but he just smiled and offered to pick me up for school tomorrow. The cops haven't found the culprit yet, so from now on, I'll be your guardian. How sweet. After that, I hung out with him every day. Great, right? Only, somehow it didn't feel the same as when we were texting. Back then we had a deep connection. Now it was just like two friends hanging out. Oh, and not to mention Olivia, Jer's childhood friend who can't seem to leave him alone for more than two seconds. One time, Jer and I were at the movies together. But guess who coincidentally appeared and plonked herself down next to him? Yep, Olivia. Worse still, with their giggling and popcorn sharing, I felt like the third wheel. I was not having this again, so I just left for home in this random cab parked outside the theater. But bad luck. 
The driver doesn't know the way. He doesn't even have a phone. And I had to lend him mine for GPS. The guy snatched it out of my hand immediately. Rude. But wait, it was 9 p.m. already. Why did he still have shades on? And even wore a mask? Right then, I realized the car had passed the town's border. Stop! The car suddenly filled with smoke. And the last thing I thought was, he has eyes that were exactly like... Jairs. I woke up finding myself in this old, cobwebby room. Where is this place? And that driver guy? I have to get out of here now. <clears throat> ah! Right at that moment, he came into the room with a smile. Don't you recognize me? Will you have another dance with me? Because I'd love that. What is happening right now? What he just said. Did that mean... He's the actual masked knight? Maybe that's why I don't feel connected to Jeremiah. Why did Cher lie to me then? So many questions popped up in my head. Then suddenly I heard a car stop outside. That guy immediately went to check. This could be my chance of escaping. By the time I got downstairs, I saw the driver guy talking to... Jeremiah. So I hid behind the door and watched on. Cameron, just stop this. Getting revenge on our father is one thing but this is a step too far. Take Viv back to her family now and end this. I know this looks bad, but trust me, I'd never hurt Viv. I didn't mean for her to fall into the pool. That's why I jumped in to save her. But I need her as bait to show the world what that jerk Gregory is like. He doesn't deserve to be her father. <gasps> I muzzled myself in shock. Gregory is their father? And that Cameron guy was the one saving me. Not Jer? Don't you forget who abandoned us when mom had a close brush with death, then took all our business and properties, even our home, leaving us helpless? That jerk deserves all he gets. I was trying to process it all. When another car arrived, Gregory's. I quickly hid under the stairs before he walked in with a bunch of bodyguards. Cameron, Jeremiah, my sons, haven't you grown up so fast? Cut to the chase. Give us back the business, and what's rightfully ours. Then we'll let your stepdaughter go. Huh, <laughs> indeed. Like father, like sons. Very smart. But still amateurs, my boys. You see, all that girl is to me is an obstacle blocking my way to the inheritance. So please, be my guest and take care of that little Miss Annoying. Aren't you afraid we'll expose everything you just said? And who's gonna believe you now? Jacqueline is mesmerized by me so she'd believe anything I say. <laughs> that snake. How dare he speak of my mom like that? Unable to hold in my rage, I jumped out of my hiding spot and screamed at Gregory. What did you say about my mom? You slimy, lying traitor. Nice talking to you all, but the fun has to end here. Goodbye. The guards lunged forward, about to tie me up when... The cops smashed the door coming in, and behind them was... Mom! Stop right there. How dare you do this to my daughter? Gregory's face turned paler than a ghost as he mumbled out, Jackie, honey, why you're here? Um, but just in time to save our baby, Vivian. Cut the act. I already heard everything you said. And you're going to jail for a long time. Then the cops led him and took his crook guards away. Seeing Mom... I was so happy I rushed to hug her. Turns out, her investigations of the pool incident led her to Cameron. So when she confronted him, he eventually told her everything. That's how they came up with a plan to catch Gregory red-handed. Mom and the cops had been waiting in ambush around here for Gregory to show up. Then, well, you know the rest. A lot has happened in three months. Mom finally finished all the legal stuff. So now the property Gregory had merged with hers to gain her trust is now signed back over to Cam and Jeremiah. I realized that being wealthy isn't a bad thing, especially as it means with influence like this, I can help other less fortunate people and really make a difference. Now I help mom with her business and her charity work, and I'm really enjoying it. I'm proud of my hardworking, amazing mom, and I'm proud of who I am. And guess what? I now have real friends who like me for me. As for Jeremiah, well, he apologized about everything. 
He used to fear his brother was going to hurt me, so he lied to protect me. We made up, of course, and became the best of friends. I'm not sure I can say the same about his brother, though. He did everything he could to beg for my forgiveness, but I just can't. Then one day, Jer asked me to come by his home to visit his mom. She begged me not to think badly of her boys, especially Cameron. He's in love with you, you know? He always talks about you, and how he wishes things would have been different. Oh boy, her words are starting to have an effect on me. When I walked out the door, I saw Cameron sitting on the porch. He turned and looked at me, and I felt my heart pound for my gray-eyed, masked night. So, taking a deep breath, I walked over to him, just as the sun was setting. Hey guys, Private Davis here. Yep, Taylor Davis, the girl who secretly disguised herself as her twin brother to attend an all-boy military school. In the last part, I had to deal with my fair share of challenges, but having Tom and Henry, my two best pals by my side, made things way easier. But still, there were problems my two comrades couldn't help me with, such as this situation right now involving Ellis, finding out about my real identity. Not that I'm interested in your mess but I need to find my brother Jacob. So, let's make a deal. I'll keep your secret if you help me find him. What? How am I meant to find a guy I don't even know? To my surprise, Ellis then truthfully told me his story. Turns out, he came to this school for two reasons. To punish those who picked on Jacob and to find clues about his disappearance. Meanwhile, I coincidentally met this Jacob guy outside of school and found his dog tag, so I was the only lead he had for now. But could I really trust this guy? I mean, just look at what he did to Eric. If you don't want to do it, then I can go to the principal's office. Okay, so what? I found the dog tag while we snuck out to a local girl's school. That's all I know. If you spill my secret, I won't let you find your brother in peace either. So you better know a way to take me to that school. I'll pick the time to make a move and you just try your best not to get caught. The next morning, I was walking to class as usual when I passed a bunch of guys huddled together, whispering something about me? Huh? Wait, did Ellis reveal my identity to everyone? Such a fraud! I ran to find him, but accidentally crashed into this boy called Finley. I helped him up as the whispers around us got even louder. Guess you're one of the alleged suspects too. Finley then told me that yesterday, someone discovered a box that looked just like a pack of candy in the bathroom, but inside were a bunch of tampons. So now the students thought there was either a pervert on campus, or that one of us was secretly a girl. And according to them, anyone who never joined the public shower was suspicious. Oh no, what if they found out the tampons were mine? Guys, hot girl alert! Everyone immediately forgot about me and flocked to him. The buzz on campus was that an inspection officer was staying here for a few months, and he'd brought his beautiful daughter Ivy along with him. People said she looks like a fairy with this ethereal vibe. Just then the inspector, Ivy, and his group stepped into the hallway. I watched them all drool over her. Poof, please. Anyone would think they'd never seen a girl before. She walked past these silly boys with a smug smile, but as soon as she caught sight of me standing there unfazed, She froze to the spot and stared straight at me. What? Was I supposed to show off my smitten face too? Dad, I need someone to show me around school. Can I take him? What? Why me? I couldn't even say anything as the principal had already agreed. Come on, let's go. Oh, you're so muscular. Ew, gross! Later on, she shooed Henry and Tom out of the entertainment room just because she wanted to spend time alone with me. Another time, when we were about to do our cleaning duty, Ivy popped out of nowhere and asked me to go hang with her. She even stopped two guys passing by and did her whole fluttering eyelashes routine to persuade them to do my cleaning duties instead. Ivy, I appreciate your help, but we all have our chores to do. This isn't fair on the others. Don't you get it, Jack? I did all this because I want to be close to you. I like you. I, uh, um... I think you'll be better suited to someone else. Then I ran out of there, leaving everyone behind stunned at my harsh rejection. For the next couple of days, Ivy was furious and looked at me like she wanted to tear me to pieces. And the whispers started circulating again. 
They said that refusing a girl as beautiful as Ivy meant that I must have not had any interest in girls. Or even worse, I probably was a girl myself, and I was the one who dropped the tampons in the bathroom. Gosh, this was bad. That night, as usual, I just stepped out of the communal bathroom after a late night shower when someone suddenly dragged me into the equipment room. It was Ellis. What's going on? Just then, footsteps resounded from the hall. I held my breath as I anxiously waited for them to pass by. Phew, that was close. Turns out, that afternoon, Ellis heard the officers discussing security tightening, especially in the student communal bathroom area at night. So he waited for me outside and hid me just in time. He saved me. We tried to sneak through the new building close to our dorm, but unfortunately bumped into... Ivy. What are you doing here? Trying to sneak out, huh? Officer- It's not what you think, I- Jack came here to confess his feelings to you, right? Jack? Oh, uh, um, yes. I- I think I'm fond of you. Oh, yeah? Then why did you refuse me the other day? He was just too insecure. I mean, you're quite the catch with your high-up dad while he's just a private. But he can't ignore his feelings for you any longer, so- Ugh, cringe. But it worked, as Ivy looked so moved and lunged forward to hug me. Then I guess we officially became a couple? <laughs> and as Ellis planned, the rumors about me being a girl were replaced with jealous gazes. Now Ivy followed me to every class, every break time. I barely had any time alone. This tactical combat course was my only chance to get away from her. We had to go to this warehouse to practice saving a mannequin captive. I was focusing on the mission, but still got caught by an enemy. Wait, it was Ellis? He seemed agitated and told me we needed to leave this Friday afternoon. As we were discussing how to sneak out of school, why do you need to meet up? We almost jumped out of our skin. Ivy! Why are you sneaking up on us? What did you hear? Just you asking my boyfriend out? Oh, I see what's going on here. You like Jack, don't you? Weirdly, Ellis seemed flustered. He was sweating and mumbling out nonsense. Was he that scared of Ivy? Suddenly, Ivy grabbed my collar, trying to... Kiss me? Panicked, I shoved her duck face away. Just in time, the siren went off, signaling the course was over, so I ran out of there. To avoid Ivy, the plan changed to early Friday morning. I had to fake an injury to get out of class. Ellis and I met up at the back door, jumped into the milk delivery truck, and let it take us to the local girls' school. When we arrived, I led him to the school entrance where I'd found Jacob's dog tag. We spoke to some students, but no one knew who Jacob was, and people started to stare at us as if we were creeps. <sighs> we were about to give up when this woman approached us. Why are you looking for Jacob? You look... exactly like him! Turned out, she's Mrs. Walker, a teacher here, and she knows Jacob! Her husband found him dazed and injured at the edge of the woods and took him in. His health got better with time, but his happiness didn't. So when prom came, Mrs. Walker told Jacob to go and enjoy the night, hoping he'd feel better. But he returned early and was only invested in this dog tag he'd picked up from someone named Jack Davis, since that was also the name of Jacob's favorite drag queen who performed at big theaters. This incident then gave Jacob a push to take action. He always wanted to live with his true self, but he'd been lost along the way. So he decided to venture to find Jack Davis, the role model that might be the only one who could help him now. He had parted ways with the walkers to go on this self-discovery journey not long ago. On the way back, Ellis and I stayed quiet. I didn't expect Jacob to know my twin brother. Should I tell Ellis that I might know where Jacob went? But I couldn't just lead him to my home to find his brother as... My parents didn't know I'd disguised as Jack and joined this all-boy military school. If they ever found out about this, I could kiss my soldier dreams goodbye. When the truck stopped, I got off and was about to go back to the dorm when Ellis pulled my hand. You know that Jack, right? Is he your twin brother? If it's true, then please tell me where he is. I'm sorry, but I can't. I, I've got homework to do. Then I left as he called after me. The next day, I tried to avoid Ellis, but he was ahead of me. He was desperate, but I just shook my head. Y you selfish fraud! Right away, Tom ran to stand between me and Ellis while Henry defended me. What, you want to become the next Eric? Get lost, you jerk! Oh no, 
I tried explaining to them that Ellis didn't mean any harm, but they didn't listen and just pulled me away from him. I felt so bad. For that whole day, I kept thinking about what had happened. Ellis was right. I was selfish. He might never see his brother again because of me. I had to go help him. But when I got to his room, his roommate said he'd already taken his annual leave to go find his brother. Oh no, he must have figured out my home address somehow. I gotta go home, but how to get out of school? It wasn't milk delivery day. As I was thinking, Tom and Henry approached me, asking why I was acting so weird. <sighs> this was it. I guess I shouldn't lie to them any longer. Guys, I have something to tell you. I'm actually a girl. Then I told them why I came here in the first place, how things got entangled with Ellis, and now he went looking for my house as his brother might be there. I waited for them to be mad, but instead, they smiled gently at me. That's a pretty big secret to carry. Girl or boy, this changes nothing. You're still our friend. They were not angry with me. I felt so relieved knowing that I didn't have to hide anything from them anymore. Hmm, now I just needed to figure out a way to go home. We can handle this. Go wait near the back gate. And I did. Just in time, the fire alarm went off, and all officers guarding the gate ran to that direction. A few seconds later, the back gate suddenly opened and the CCTV went off, and I just slid through easily. Luckily, I arrived home before Ellis did. My heart was pounding when I knocked on the door. Then mom and dad opened it. Needless to say, seeing their daughter dressed as a boy soldier was a huge shock. I quickly explained to them how I'd secretly taken Jack's place, and their faces kept turning darker and darker. How could you lie to us, then illegally enter an all-boys military school? What were you thinking? Right then, Jack, my twin, rushed down the stairs. He immediately got what was going on and backed me up. Mom, Dad, this has been Taylor's dream ever since she was little. This is dangerous. If you get caught, you could be sent to a juvenile center. Pack your bags and quit the school right now. In that heated moment, Ellis barged in. Jacob? Jacob! Are you here? Where did you hide him? I tried to calm him, but it was no use. The whole scene was chaotic. Then suddenly, he stopped dead, staring at the stairs. Huh? Someone else was here. Someone with silky, long hair, a beautifully made-up face, in a super pretty dress. It was... Jacob. He apologized to my parents for his brother's behavior. Then we all sat down as he told us how he realized from a young age that he was interested in feminine things. So he used to sneak into his mom's closet and use her clothes and makeup. One time, his parents caught him and they were so worried about his deviant behavior, they forced him to attend military school hoping to straighten him up. But of course, he didn't fit in there and was fed up with being teased by Eric. So when he saw a chance to run away, he did so without hesitation, cutting off all ties with the school and his family. Luckily, the walkers found him in the woods and took great care of him. Still, it wasn't enough. He needed to discover his true self. So we came to Jack's. I beg of you, don't make me go back home again. I can't stand the disappointed look on mom and dad's faces. I just want to be myself. I know it must be hard, but you gotta go home and face your parents. Once they know how you truly feel, they'll understand. Mom, Dad, I'm sorry for being so reckless, but being a soldier is my dream. Please give me a chance. <sighs> I can't let you do it. But you can have till the end of the semester to pack your stuff and say your goodbyes. That's it. Just then, I heard footsteps outside. It was... Ivy. What was she doing here? You tricked me. I already knew there was something weird going on with you and Ellis. But you're a... girl? <laughs> Lucky me, I had your whole secret recorded here. Let's see how my dad punishes you, fraud. This is bad. Ellis and I jumped into his car and drove back to the school immediately. But we arrived back to an unexpected situation. The principal, aka Eric's dad, was already packing his things and a strange lady with a stern look was sitting at his desk. Wait, did this mean we had a new principal? Yep, turns out the inspection officer came to school to investigate our principal on allegations that he'd been condoning his son's mistreatment of other students. And it was none other than Ellis here who had been gathering up evidence to help him. Then what about me? Well, in return for Ellis's assistance, 
the officer decided to let me stay and study here. In fact, the new principal even had some other plans. Finally, it's the end of the semester. Whew. And you know what? Our school now officially welcomes female students, which means I'm legitimately the first girl in school. I'm so grateful for our new principal. Meanwhile, me, Henry, and Tom are still the best of comrades. Obviously, nothing could ever stand between us. And of course, my parents are okay with me staying since I don't have to hide my real identity anymore. About Jacob, he actually listened to Jack's advice and went home to talk to his parents. They were shocked to see him like that, but as he poured his heart out to them, they decided to slowly accept the real him. As for his brother, Ellis, we went through a lot together, and now we're best friends. There might be some sparks between us, though, but I don't know. Let's just wait and- Oh god, my Roger. Look at him. Those chiseled features and dreamy eyes. No wonder every girl swoon at the sight of him, and of course, me. His biggest fan is no exception. <sighs> You're probably wondering how I got into the backstage area of a star actor like Roger, right? It's simple. His makeup artist is Hannah, and she just so happens to be my big sister. Of course, I had to beg her for days to let me tag along. That's why I have to embrace every second of being this close to my celebrity crush. Hey, are you taking pictures of me? Oh no, busted. I was stammering, trying to come up with some excuse, when to my surprise, Roger lifted my phone and took a selfie. Here you go, baby girl. Next time, just ask. Oh my, there's no denying that Roger is boyfriend material. The girls from my class will definitely be turning green once they know this. Oh, he wants some orange juice? No problem, Roger. Just call me your own personal genie. Then I rushed around to find some OJ and hurried backstage to give it to him. But too late, his other fangirls had beat me to it. There were enough juices for him to drink all year round now. Sadly, I turned around to leave, but accidentally bumped into someone. Holy moly, it's Roger! He smiled at me and looked down at the cup of fresh orange juice in my hands. May I borrow your OJ? This is my number if you need it. What does this mean? Have I, an ordinary girl, caught the eye of the hottest guy on the planet? Ouch! This is clearly not a dream. For the rest of the evening, I tried composing the perfect message to him. Ugh, why was it so hard? I must have typed and deleted it at least 100 times. Oh no! I just pressed the send button by accident. Before I could remove that message, he already replied. That's it. There's no turning back now. I tried to calm myself down and went with the flow, which then led us to hours of long conversation. And soon, we were talking every day. One day, out of the blue, he said he wanted us to have a private date. Does that mean our relationship has moved on to the next level? <coughs> our first date was at this low-key diner with very few customers. I disguised myself just like what Roger told me to and waited for him. <sighs> but it's been an hour in vain. Did he really stand me up? I glumly got up to leave when a sweaty, out-of-breath Roger appeared. Turns out he struggled to lose his security guards just to come and see me. Aw, it's so sweet that he went to all this effort for a normal girl like me. No need for a fancy restaurant nor extravagant gifts. This diner was already the most romantic as I had a real gentleman right here. Don't wake me up from this dream ever. Then, before we parted, he gently put a daisy bracelet on my wrist. Dating in secret is pretty exciting, right babe? Oh boy, this proved that I was no longer just a mere fangirl having a crush on her idol. Yep, we were officially dating in secret. The next day, I arrived at school in the best mood ever. I was singing on the way to class when my friend Alba startled me. Hey, have you watched the new trailer for Roger's upcoming film? It's dope. I booked the ticket for the sneak show already. Pfft, that's nothing. I already got a slot at the movie premiere. Jealous much? Huh, <laughs> that's the power of a fan club's vice president. And for me, I just had the most romantic dinner date ever with Roger. Oh, of course. That's only what I wish I could say. In fact, I could just smile and then head on to my seat. <sighs> Keeping this secret is driving me crazy. 
But I guess dating an idol comes with a price, and I don't mind paying for it my whole life. <laughs> But okay, on top of all the secrecy, as y'all know, celebrities are always occupied, having no private time left. So we have to come up with inventive ways to get some alone time. Finally, Hannah had left. Let's see, hair, makeup, clothes, everything was perfect. No one seemed around. Now I needed to hurry to Roger's fan. Hey Hannah, why are you still here? Wow, look at you, all dressed up, huh? What's the occasion? <laughs> Oh, um, I just forgot my stuff. See ya. And then I rushed behind the vanity van. Phew, so close. It's a good thing I look a lot like my sister and have picked up some great makeup tips from her, so it's a piece of cake for me to pretend to be Hannah and sneak into the filming site. <laughs> Let me see if you're my adorable Harper. While praising my excellent disguise, Roger suddenly went silent. Then he turned into a completely different person. His attitude changed. He pushed me away, poured his coffee onto his shoes, and started yelling at me. What on earth are you doing? Do you know how much these cost? Clean them. What just happened? I reached my arm out and asked if I'd upset him, but a woman swung my hand away. Take your filthy hand off my son. Oh, it's Roger's mom, Mrs. Walker, the chairwoman of the film production company, known by the entire industry for being a bossy lady who always caused others difficulties. Worse still, the buzzing sound outside also started growing louder. Oh no, I better not cause any trouble here. So I kept my gaze at the ground and frantically apologized. Suddenly, a hand grabbed my arm and pulled me away. It was Danielle, Roger's manager. Don't be bothered too much if he acted a little off. He was just too stressed from work. I'm Roger's older sister, by the way. We were super close, so I understand him better than anyone. Oh, MG, I didn't know he had an older sister. <laughs> but I know about you. Every time he sees you, his eyes fill with happiness. It's kind of obvious. Oh, um, we... You don't have to say anything. I'll keep your love story a secret. It turned out that Danielle knew everything and didn't say a word because she knew it would embarrass us. After that, she drove me home and we exchanged numbers. Roger wasn't being very responsive, so it was nice having Danielle to talk to, as she was very supportive of our relationship and kept me up to date with the schedule. A whole week has passed since that day with no reply from Roger. Nothing. Not a single phone call. I also texted his new phone number that Danielle gave me, but still zilch. Sometimes, I don't know if I really have a boyfriend or not. I just want to experience what other couples have. <sighs> Stop wasting your time fantasizing about a guy far out of your league. It's so tragic, especially now he has a girlfriend. He's totally betrayed us. What did she just say? Girlfriend? I hurriedly went online and saw a photo of Roger and Jessica, a hot singer, looking cozy backstage. So he was ghosting me to be with her? My heart felt like it was going to burst into flames. I immediately texted Danielle and she replied straight back, complaining that she was also having a headache with Jess's dirty PR tricks to promote her new album. Oh, phew. So it's just a silly rumor. What a relief. Besides, for the past few days, Roger hadn't contacted me at all because he'd been busy filming a new movie in Paris. He would be back soon, and he was gonna hold a small meet and greet downtown. Danielle suggested I should show up and surprise him, and she even cleared up Roger's schedule that day so we could go on a date after the event. <coughs> Wonderful, Danielle! That day, I went to the meet and greet and disguised myself so perfectly that Roger wouldn't recognize me. He would be so surprised to see me here. To be honest, I don't like my man doing all those kinds of air kisses or hugs with fans, but, well, that's his job. And I should be understanding. Besides, I used to fall for these sweet gestures as a fan too. Roger, are any of these dating rumors true? Well, I just thought, you know, I'm better off focusing on my work and you guys. You're my true supporters, unlike all the girls out there who only approach me for fame and money. What does he mean? So he just sees me as one of those cloud-chasing girls out there? I seemed to be out of breath among the excited howls of his fans, and I couldn't stay here much longer. 
I was sobbing as I ran outside, thinking about how Roger actually thought of me, of us, all this time. Suddenly, a car stopped in front of me. It was Danielle. I know it's hard being in love with a celebrity, but from a fan's perspective, that's something they want to hear from him. Of course, he can't speak up about his real relationship, but you can. You mean, there's nothing wrong with your love, and we have plenty of other ways to express it discreetly, right? What Danielle said got me thinking. Sophie teases me every day for dreaming about dating my idol, but this relationship is real, and I have the right to show off my love, right? So, I posted my favorite picture from one of our dates on Instagram as a way to pour my heart out. The next morning, I woke up to see an angry text from Roger. Harper, why did you break our promise? Why did you disclose our relationship? Things are a mess now. Underneath, it was the link to a tweet along with the title, Young actor Roger is suspected of dating someone 10 years his senior. Oh no 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 no, how did they find my photo that quickly? And worse, they must have mistaken the person in the picture to be my sister, Hannah. Well, at least my sister is on vacation, so she hasn't found out about this yet. I must fix this before she comes back, or else she's gonna kill me. I tried to contact both Roger and Danielle, but got no response. What to do? Ah, Roger is having a press conference for his new movie. I'll go there and talk to him directly. I used Hannah's pass card to rush backstage in the hope Roger would be there, but... Wait, there's only Mrs. Walker and her staff. You better clean up the scandal immediately. Don't let it affect the conference. So annoying. That makeup artist must be using some tricks to take advantage of Roger. Now she will know what it's like to have her career ruined. Oh no, I can't let that happen. Please don't do this. It's not Hannah in the picture. It was me, her sister. Roger and I are in love. <laughs> I never said I loved you, so stop making a fool of yourself. Sorry, Mom. I was just playing around with her because I was bored. Let me handle this. What? I thought he was different. Turns out he's just another jerk who uses fame to flirt with girls. We're over! I shouted then sprinted out of there. For days after that, more Twitter videos were posted from Roger's alleged staff claiming he was arrogant and rude. It serves him right, I guess. However, I began to wonder about the fact that there weren't a lot of people there at those moments. Who could have been the one taking those videos? Suddenly, a Twitter notification popped up and brought me back to reality. Wait, it's that account, isn't it? The fans were still furious with Roger. Scrolling through the articles about him, I saw a bunch of comments telling everyone to cancel him. They even shared a picture of Roger going to bars and getting drunk the night before his apology press conference. Even though I was mad at him, I couldn't just switch off my feelings. So I took an Uber to the bar to find Roger, but because of my age, the security guard stopped me. As I was trying to find a way to sneak inside, I saw a familiar figure. It was Roger, sitting on the steps of the bar's back door. Hey, you alright? I'll call Danielle to come pick you up. No, please. I'm too tired of having bodyguards and a manager follow me 24-7. I just want to be alone now. Harper, I'm sorry for hurting you all this time. I just want to say, it was real. I really do love you. I did what I did because I was so worried that my adoptive mom would harm you if she knew about us. Your adoptive mom? Yeah. I'm not Mrs. Walker's biological son. She recognized my acting talents, so she adopted me when I was 11. Since then, I've been nothing more than a money-making machine to her. He then told me how his pure passion for acting was starting to be worn out by all these pressures of being a celebrity, especially now that he knew someone was behind all the recent scandals. I know who's behind it all, so do show up at the press conference as planned and I'll take care of the rest. I waited for Roger to finish his apology for all the scandals. Then I went up to address the crowd. All of the rumors are fake. I know this because I'm the girl from the video. And the person who filmed and edited it to make it look bad was his manager, Danielle. I pointed to her and amidst the gasps, all eyes and cameras shifted to her. Wh what This is slander. You have no proof. Then, I held up my phone and played a video recording of Sophie admitting that Danielle was giving her the videos to upload on the internet. 
Actually, on the presentation day, Sophie accidentally revealed her secret Twitter account, which was none other than at Cancel Roger, the one of the so-called staff. So I confronted her right away and told her that she could be sued for defaming others. When I first heard the rumor about Roger having a girlfriend, I was blinded by jealousy, so I listened to Danielle. Given that she's his manager, how could I not believe that those videos were true? As his fan club vice president, I had my member's best interest at heart, so please, don't sue me. Fine, it was me. So what? I need to show mom that Roger is not as special as she thinks she is. I knew Roger liked Harper, so I approached her and used the relationship to ruin his career. Then, mom would finally notice me. Whoa, what a twist, right? So what now? Well, Mrs. Walker and Daniel's true intentions were exposed for all to see. This cleared Roger of all the scandals and his fans are all back together to support him again. He has a new manager now and they have no problem with him publicly dating me. Oh, and as for Hannah, arriving back from her trip to discover she'd been dating one of her celebrity clients didn't go down too well with her. <laughs> But it's not all bad, since she now has loads of bookings after this scandal. So if anything, she has me to thank for being more in demand than ever. It's finally the first day at the aquarium. And to say I'm nervous is an understatement. Stay calm, you can do this. <sighs> You're Ariel, not Naira. I'm headstrong, spirited, and... Okay, let's get into character. Bright smile, check. Friendly manner, check. Ariel's accent, check. I was a dazzling mermaid and even let the little kids stick their stickers on my fishtail while I answered a bazillion questions about Atlantica and my Prince Eric. The last visitor was the sweetest little girl who handed me a collectible box of cutlery as a gift. Oh my, such a lovely comb, but it looks rare. Are you sure your guardians would agree to this? Of course. My brother always says yes to me. The little girl signaled someone in the crowd to come over, and it was arson? As in the cutest boy from school? Naira, oh my god, your take on Ariel is spot on. I didn't know there was a side of you. I... What are you talking about? I know not of this Naira. Feeling the panic rise in me, I lifted my fishtoe costume and ran with my two feet as all the kids stared in shock. I'd never wanted to disappoint those kids, but I had the biggest crush on Arson, and no way had I expected him to be there and see me like this. <sighs> At school, I was a loser, a nobody. Yet, when I was acting, I felt invincible. At least, I did until my timid, introverted side got in the way of my performing dreams. That day, our drama club mentor announced our school play this year would be Legally Blonde. I loved that movie so much, and I already knew all the lines. I couldn't let this opportunity pass me by, so when the mentor asked who wanted to audition as the lead, Elle Woods, I took all the courage and raised my hand. The whole room fell silent and suddenly burst into laughter. Oh please, how could a loser like you play the glamorous Elle Woods? Worst of all, the mentor agreed with her and said that I might be better suited for the nail lady role. And then she said the lead should go to someone who's outgoing and influential, like Eliza. What? Eliza's got the emotional range of a teaspoon. I gotta get this role. So I waited until the end of the meeting and then spoke to the mentor in private. I'm sorry, but I can't cast an Elle Woods with stage fright. Naira, I'll consider giving you the role, but only if you can prove to me that you can do this without your fear getting the better of you. So try practicing by going out in public and interacting with strangers. Get yourself comfortable in front of a crowd. Can you do that? Feeling determined, I went to look for some kind of social experiment right away. And that's why I applied for this job at the aquarium. But I never thought anyone from class would show up. Least of all, Arson. He even caught up with me at school the next day, insisting he saw me at the aquarium. And typical me, being all fidgety and shy, I blurted out, maybe you mistook me for my twin sister, Cora. Oh, in that case then, can I get her number? Or can you, like, arrange for me to go on a date with her? The way she glowed with confidence was amazing. Well, I didn't expect him to be that into my acting. How ironic. Wait, what if I continue to play Cora and go on a date with him? I could practice my acting as this unapologetically outgoing girl while spending time with him? Tempting, right? Okay, wait at the book cafe near school on Sunday, 3pm. I'll tell Cora about it. I'd been preparing for this date the whole week. 
After watching multiple tutorials on YouTube, I was finally able to put together this bold look. All that's left to do was to wear Cora's self-confidence to match it. So I did a Bella Hadid runway strut into the cafe, straight past the gawping onlookers and over to Arson's seat, and interrupted him from his reading. Hi, is that a Rick Riordan's book? Uh, yeah, Heroes of Olympus. Are you a fan of Riordan too? Are you kidding me? I've read all of his works. Yes, Breaking the Ice, success. We connected over our shared love of fantasy novels and other nerdy things. I didn't want the date to ever end, so I invited him along to a secret place of mine. I covered his eyes until we got there. Being the cute guy he was, he went along with it, even though he looked unsure about what was happening. When I turned the lights on and the ice rink appeared, his face lit up. Then the snow began to fall. It felt like a scene out of Frozen. Then we went onto the ice and... Arson fell straight onto his butt. <laughs> Stop laughing. This is my first time, okay? Aw, embarrassed arson was so cute. <laughs> I helped him up, and it was the first time our hands touched. I led him around the rink and taught him some moves. When I looked at him, I saw him looking back at me with this big grin on his face. Then suddenly he pulled me in, and I fell right into his embrace. Our faces were so close, and I swore we were about to kiss. Ugh, overcome with nerves, I pushed him away, and he lost his balance and fell flat on the ice but he jumped up to his feet right away and skated after me. Oh, don't let me catch you, or else. Let's see you try. <laughs> Yesterday felt like a dream. We texted each other nonstop up until the last class of the day, P.E. My eyes were still glued to my phone when a flying ball hit my knee. It was from Eliza. Right after that, another one came and knocked my glasses off. I shielded myself with my arms and hoped it would go away soon, and surprisingly, it did. Only... Arson was standing in front of me, blocking all the balls. Arson, what are you doing there? We were just playing around. <laughs> playing around? Can't you see you're hurting her? Then Arson turned to me and asked me if I was okay. Could this be it? Did he realize I was the girl he went on a date with? The thank you for helping me out. You're my friend, and also Cora's sister, so I've got to look out for you, right? Oh, he didn't recognize me. That meant my acting was flawless, right? Then why did I feel so uneasy about it? As uncomfortable as I felt about the situation, I also liked Arson way too much to stop it. So I continued pretending to be Cora. He acted so lovey-dovey on our dates, and it made my heart melt. But at school, he only saw me as Cora's helpless, clumsy sister. He talked about her constantly, and stared blankly into space as if there were an imaginary Cora there. It started bugging me that Arson only liked the confident, fun, and spontaneous heroine I'd created. Not coy Naira. <sighs> I couldn't blame him, though. If I didn't find myself... lovable. Maybe that's why Mom left me, and didn't bother to write, or to call. I couldn't do this anymore. I couldn't feed Arson with false expectations of an unreal character, so I typed out a text to Arson telling him that Cora was on her way to study abroad for three years and that this relationship wouldn't work. Arson kept texting back, non-stop, and even came to my house to look for Cora and broke down in tears when I told him she'd already left. I felt so bad, but that was the only way for him to stop fantasizing about Cora. Over time, his pain would fade, right? From that day on, Arson always looked for me at school and consistently asked about her. This didn't go unnoticed by Eliza, who was clearly green with envy. Lunchtime came, and Eliza, along with her minions, suddenly approached me. Why so lonely? Has Arson abandoned you? <laughs> I tried to ignore her and eat my lunch, but she wouldn't leave me alone. Fine then, I'll lend you a hand. Arson, hi! Did you know that Naira here is so obsessed with you? She even admits that she loves to follow you everywhere like a stalker. How creepy. Huh? What was this girl saying? Now people were staring at me, judging me for something that wasn't even true. I was done with being Naira, the loser. If only... Yeah, if only Cora's personality helped me stand up for myself. Shut up! Me and Arson are friends, so what? Why do you have to make stuff up about me? Is it because you're jealous of me? What? Me? Jealous of you? You like Arson, don't you? I feel sorry for you, really. You're gonna pick on everyone he talks to? How pathetic. Just like that, people made disapproving comments at Eliza. She couldn't do anything other than run away in shame. 
While I suddenly received praise for standing up against the school's tyrant, people seemed to love this new side of me, so perhaps it was a good time to give myself a makeover. The next day at school, I started dressing up boldly and wearing contact lenses instead of nerdy glasses. My classmates seemed to like my new look. My drama club mentor changed her attitude towards me as well. I even applied for the student council and my popularity grew, and so did my friendship circle. The world opened up to me, but weirdly, being around people all the time just felt uncomfortable and exhausting. I couldn't really talk to any of them, as we weren't even close. I just felt so left out. When it came to a charity date auction, being on the council committee meant that I was appointed a bachelorette. That meant everyone joining this event would bid to take me on a date, and that bidding money would go to the school's fund to build a new cafeteria. That's how I ended up here, on stage at the auction. I tried my best to act cool to raise as much money as possible. The boys kept cheering for me, trying to show their charms, and I tried to flirt back by talking nonsense and winking at them. Once the bidding started, chaos commenced as people kept raising their paddle numbers. 40. 60. 80. It suddenly came to me that I didn't want to go on dates with any of these guys. I didn't know them at all. And just then, Arson shouted from the back. 500. 500 going once, going twice, and sold. Arson jumped on stage, grabbed my hand, and dragged me out of there. He led me to the garden, and then he started asking me tons of questions. What is it with you lately? It's as if you're someone else. N no way. I'm just the same old Naira. Tell me the truth. Are you... Cora? You switch places with your sister to protect her, right? Oh, Cora, I've missed you so much. After all this time, he was still in love with Cora? Even now when I changed myself, he still didn't see me as Naira? Arson, I... I can't. And then I just ran out of there. After a night of crying myself to sleep, I was back at school and found myself summoned to the principal's office with a smirking Eliza. There she showed the principal a video recording of my conversation with Arson last night, which was proof that someone else had been replacing me at school. If this was true, I could be expelled. Oh no, no, no! Panic! I blurted out a lie that I had bipolar and that sometimes I switched to the other persona and acted up. The principal seemed confused. But then she insisted I go to the school therapist. <sighs> I had no choice but to agree. And it was actually really good for me. Through talking to the therapist, I could finally open up about my past. Ever since I was a kid, I've always been super shy. I thought it was why my mom left me behind when she split from dad and moved out. She hadn't even contacted me once. I know a childish nerd like me would never be the one who she could really talk to. Thank God my dad came to pick me up after that. The thought of facing my so-called friends on the bus was making me nauseous. Were you that unhappy not having your mother around? I just don't know why she left me behind without a word. Was I a loser in her eyes? Honey, listen. Mom loves you. And the reason you didn't receive any letters from her was because I hid them all from you. What? Why would you do that? Because I was so broken after your mom left that I thought it would be better if you and I could forget everything about her. I... I'm sorry. Don't you know how terrible I felt about myself all those years just because of your selfishness? I ran into the house immediately. I couldn't look at him right now, only to see Mom and Cora were sitting in the living room. Both rushed towards me and pulled me in for a hug. Yeah, the Cora character wasn't entirely made up. Instead, I based her on my real-life twin sister. The little five-year-old me, always struck by Cora's side, hid behind her dress while she boldly stood up against anyone who dared to pick on me. I'd always looked up to her. Turned out, when Dad got the call from school, he realized his actions had caused me pain. So he did everything in his power to contact Mom and brought her and Cora from L.A. to here. Mom kept apologizing to me, saying she regretted every minute of leaving me behind. Seeing them all break down in tears like that ached my heart, but it gave me this warm feeling at the same time. After all this time, my family feud was finally resolved. Just at that moment, the doorbell rang. It's Arson! Naira, is that your boyfriend? What? I dragged him away immediately, and this time I admitted the whole truth to him. 
I told him how I lied that the girl in the aquarium was Cora, because I didn't think he'd like the real me, as I wasn't a confident presence. But my feelings for him were real, and that's why I tried so hard to get close to him, but I figured now that he knew the truth, it'd be over, so I'd just walk away. Finally, I'm back. I've been in LA for an entire winter break to spend more time with Mom and Cora, and to figure myself out. I realize that being an introvert is nothing to be self-conscious about. I'm observant, and that'll help a lot of my acting passion, right? This semester, I'll definitely try to impress my drama club mentor. No boys will ever distract me again. And that's when I spotted Arson waving at me with a huge bouquet in his hand. Arson, what are you doing here? I thought you were still mad at me. Well, I thought about it a lot. And honestly, things between us got messy. So I'd like to get to know you again. Only this time, please can it be the real you? As I really want to know what Naira's about. What do you say? Um, yeah. I'd love that. <sighs> Look at this gorgeous golden cruise. Isn't it perfect for my 16th birthday? <laughs> Here comes the most exciting part of tonight. Gifts, of course. All the guests lined up eager to hand me their presents. Mr. Robinson bought me this eau de parfum in a dainty gold bottle. Yep, approved. What's next? Ooh, a pair of Jimmy Choo's from the Mitchells? Gold, of course. Nice color, but the heels are far too low. What a bummer. I'll have to pass on this. That's right. Every single thing of mine needs to follow specific standards. Why, you ask? Well, my mom saw me as her beautiful angel deserving wonderful golden luxuries since the day I was born with this silky blonde hair and sparkling amber eyes. So much that she immediately changed my nursery interior to gold along with all my baby clothes and toys to match my features. Throughout my childhood, mom continued to spoil me with life's wonderful golden luxuries. One time, I asked for a piano, then voila! A grand classical one made from pure gold appeared. Can you believe that? Another time, I said I wanted a pony. Then, without hesitation, she took me to a farm to meet Goldie, my new mare with the shiniest golden coat. Mom, thank you so much. Honey, gold is the symbol of power and divinity. You must always remember how special you are and never accept anything less than perfection. And those are the words I've been living up to. Back to my birthday party. It's time for birthday cake. But the flowers are pink. I want it all gold. Chef friends, please crepe them all out and replace them with gold ones. I couldn't believe my birthday was almost ruined because of that. Mom patted me on the shoulder to comfort me. Well, Dad just gave a disapproving look. It's just a cake, Lola. How are you going to fit in out there if you insist on being so picky? Maybe you should join a public school to open up your eyes a little. School? Hmm, that's not a bad idea. Always being homeschooled meant I didn't have any friends. Even the guests today are all my parents' business partners. But Mom opposed the idea immediately as she didn't want me to go through any hardships. Don't worry, Mom. I'll choose a school that fits all my standards. Pretty please. And, of course, she couldn't say no. <laughs> so, here I am, negotiating straight up with the principal. I suppose painting your lock of gold and bringing a personal chef to school and such are doable, but I'm afraid we don't have a private piano room. Then build one. Also, we only have outdoor sports field and swimming pool. So, just install a roof? Don't expect me to play sports in the scorching heat. Miss, unlike your previous tutor, not all the teachers here have a doctorate degree, be bilingual, and in the early to mid-thirties. Hmm, <sighs> in that case, no biggie. I'll just find another school then. No, wait, give me time. As long as your family sponsors the school as promised, I will definitely make it happen. Ha, <laughs> there you go. Finally, it's my first day of school. Immediately, all the students already swarmed around me in awe of my noble vibes and fashion sense. No surprises, as this school needs a serious makeover. But wait, that blonde girl looks pretty neat. Ooh, she even carried a yellow Chanel classic flat bag. What a coincidence. Mine's a limited edition. I went to talk to her right away. Her name's Beth, and we just naturally clicked after a brief chat about fashion and cosmetics. Seemed like I found myself an amazing bestie. Every day after class, I took Beth on shopping sprees at Saks for bonding. I got her all the clothes and accessories in gold and yellow, just like mine. I even talked her into bleaching her hair to be bright as mine. We're basically twins now. 
There's just one problem. Wherever we went, the boys followed. If you go out with me, I'll give you the latest Gucci collection. Sorry, I just bought the whole store. I can pick the stars for you if you want. Is that so? And what should I do with those useless rocks? My dad just bought me a Ferrari. I can take you anywhere. Good for you. Too bad my Rolls Royce is there. Bye. Why do they have to make such a scene? There's no way I'd fall for those idiots. I want my Prince Charming who meets all my golden standards. Hmm. How about just letting everyone know my ideal type? Then I can suss out the pyrite from the real deal boyfriend material. With no time to waste, I created an Ask Me a Question story on IG and asked Beth to cooperate. <laughs> now all I have to do is to list my requirements. The next morning at school, all of the dorks finally left me alone. Oh, except for this guy. Hey Sugarplum, I can be the man of your dreams. So, this is Josh, captain of the soccer team. Also the hottest boy here. It seemed he met all of my standards. Is he my perfect missing piece? I was dead wrong. During our date, he blabbed on non-stop about how terrible it was for him for being too rich and too handsome. Ugh, how I longed to shove the steak right into his mouth and go home. But I suppose he did meet my high standards, so maybe I should give him another chance. <sighs> the next morning, during PE class, Beth dashed toward me, holding a super duper stinky shoe? Lola, Josh lied to you. He's not 6'4". Look at this nasty hiding crease insole. He's only 6'3". Ew, gross. Babe, I I'm sorry. I only did it because- That's enough. Take this stinky shoe away from me. We are over. And so my quest to find true love is at a dead end. Again. Yet surprisingly, luck had smelled on me once more. Later that day, I came to the practice room as usual when my favorite piece of music reached my ears. Oh my, what a heavenly sight. All of a sudden, I felt my heart skip a beat as I unconsciously walked toward that boy. Seems like someone has a really good taste in music. And your skills? Not so bad either. Well, as long as you open your heart to feel its soul, not just learn the notes. Then he stood up and walked away, not bothering to look back at me once. That was a bit snobby, wasn't it? Yet strangely, I stood there dazed. But wait, who am I to swoon that easily? Let's see if he met my standards first. Beth helped me to find out more about him. Turns out he's Connor, the new transfer student who's trying out for the basketball team. So, I immediately went to Ken, the captain, and whispered in his ear, asking him to come up with an excuse to make Connor get a physical exam. At my personal doctor's office, of course. The result is finally in. Natural blonde, no baldness, check. 6'5", definitely without height increase insoles, check. White teeth, no cavities, check. Wow, he ticks all the boxes. Then I rushed to the principal's office, asking him for Connor's school report, and... It was impressive. He's always in the school's top two, actively takes part in extracurricular activities, and he even won a prize in the national basketball competition. Oh my god, he's perfect. But wait, there's one condition left. This should be easy. <laughs> Just a little higher. Higher? Ha! There they are. But these girls were way too obsessed over his abs. Those are mine, okay? That's right. There's no doubt that Connor is my Mr. Right. After that, I shyly handed him a bottle of golden labeled mineral water and asked if he'd like to practice playing piano with me. My heart was thudding like crazy, but he just muttered, Sorry, but I already have a date. Then he went past me to... Lily! What? That nerdy girl with zero social skills? There's no way I can lose to her. I immediately told the principal to switch all my classes to Connor so I could easily approach him. My amazing advisor, Beth, also helped me devise a super detailed step-by-step -step strategy. Soon, Connor will get over boring Lily and fall head over heels for me. First step, scent attraction. Beth told me that Connor loves this no-brand perfume, so I sprayed a bunch of it on and confidently walked into class. But why do people keep sneezing so much? 
Even Connor was also frowning and holding his nose. Hey, Lola, you didn't shower this morning, did you? Spraying a whole bottle of cheap perfume won't help. And the whole class burst into laughter. Ugh, how humiliating. Okay, plan B. Beth suggested a grand confession. Great idea. So when school ended, the cheerleaders and I started a formation right in the middle of the entrance to ask Connor out. But before he could react, a girl suddenly lost her balance and dragged everyone down on top of me. Ouch! This time was sure to move him to tears. But when I was cheering for him, Connor somehow missed his shot and the ball flew straight at me, causing me to tumble face first into the armpit of this smelly guy. Yuck! Why did everything keep going wrong? <sighs> Suddenly, I bumped into... Josh? He grabbed my hand and started begging me to take him back. He said he tried all kinds of ways to grow taller and actually managed to reach 6'4 now. So I should stop pursuing Connor and become his princess instead. Jeez, I'm really not in the mood for this desperado. Let go of me! I then ran into Beth while leaving. She came to tell me that she figured out another way to make Connor mine. It seems like he's really into Lily. We have to separate them. So, I called Lily to a corner and told her as long as she stayed away from Connor, I would buy her whatever she wanted. You know, not everything can be bought. Connor isn't interested in you, so you'd better give up. You're just annoying him. What? I didn't expect quiet, nerdy Lily to say that to someone as lustrous as me. Lily's words had been bothering me all day. Was I wrong to continue pursuing Connor? Suddenly, someone ran past the window and splashed an entire bucket of paint onto Lily. I sat there baffled at what had just unfolded, when Connor immediately took his jacket off and covered Lily up. You're behind this, aren't you? You've really crossed the line. Stay away from us. Wait, he thought I did that? It's true I didn't like Lily, but I just wanted her to stay away from him. I never wanted her to be covered in ghastly purple paint. But the worst was yet to come, as the next day, Connor arrived at school with pitch black hair. Y your beautiful hair! Wh why did you ruin it? But Connor just tutted at me and tried to pull Lily away. You know, there's so much more to Connor than his hair color. Do you even like him for him, or just because he happened to meet all of your absurd standards? If you're really into him, why not change your standards for him? I was speechless. Lily was right. I really thought all those standards were enough to make up an amazing boyfriend. Then I realized how Josh had what it takes. Still, I didn't want him. I only wanted Connor. Let's go, Lily. Someone this naive and spoiled will never understand what true love is. Leave her to her scheming. Wait! Why do you keep insisting that I'm the one who harmed Lily? Drop the act. I know that paint stunt was just one of your many dirty tricks. Beth's already sent me the video where you failed to bribe Lily. Huh? Beth? Why did she do that? I was still clueless when suddenly the principal called Beth to his office. I rushed there to find out the culprit splashing paint on Lily was caught, and he revealed that the mastermind was Beth. At first, she tried to deny it, but when the boys showed us their texts about the deal, she had to tell the truth. You, you stole everything from me. Before you came here, I was the it girl, but now people only see me as your replica. Why are you so obsessed with that hideous golden color and your stupid standards? I can't believe Josh actually likes you while well, I was the one by his side when you dumped him. Huh? So Beth liked Josh all this time? She even accepted to date him in secret. But turned out Josh only treated her as a side piece while he tried to win me back. If I can't have Josh, you can never have Connor. Unbelievable! So all this time, I'd let a fox guard the geese. I couldn't bear this place any longer, so I skipped class and went straight home. That night, on seeing how upset I was, Dad came to comfort me. I cried and told him all about my love life and friendship troubles. Honey, maybe it's time you saw others differently. Those standards don't mean anything. You should open your heart and allow yourself to see the good in people. Dad was right. I was so dead set on them that I couldn't see the true nature of the people around me. I chose Beth and Josh based on those standards, but both of them let me down. Meanwhile, Connor deliberately broke them, yet I couldn't shake him from my mind. The standards were like my music sheets. 
I played each note correctly, but I was so caught up in the practical side of it that I'd forgotten to embrace the soul. So the next morning, I went to apologize to Connor for the troubles I caused him and Lily. I just want you to know, I really like you, no matter what color your hair is. But may I ask you one question? What is it about Lily that you like so much? What? You think I'm dating Lily? <laughs> She's my cousin. Uh-oh, this is so embarrassing. <laughs> But wait, in that case, does that mean I still have a chance? Do you remember when you were 10, you participated in a children's piano contest? A gold necklace was stolen from the hotel you were staying at. Yeah, I just have a vague recollection about that incident. The suspect was a blonde boy, a female employee's son, but I noticed the necklace peeking through a man's pocket instead. Leave the boy alone! This man is the thief! So that kid was Connor? He was grateful and super impressed with the innocent and righteous girl back then that he recognized me right away the day we met again. However, when he saw how cocky I was, he thought I'd change for the worse and ignored me. Now I see, the admirable girl I know is still there after all this time. So, I wouldn't mind if we start getting to know each other anew. Really? Wish me luck this time, you guys. <laughs> hey, I'm Sage, but you can call me Witch. That's what all the townspeople call me anyway. My folks run a funeral home called Black Rose, and some superstitious people consider this a bad omen. By some, I mean the entire town. Everything about us is spooky and weird. Wanna see our house? It kinda has that monster house vibe, and looks like a fort in the middle of this dollhouse neighborhood. I did try making friends with the other kids, but it never worked out. Ah! Don't eat the cookies! They're poisoned! Despite all that, Mom and Dad found their work meaningful and put a lot of effort into it. Well. Maybe a little too much? I guess the reason why they're so emotional is because they know what it feels like to lose someone dear to them. My little sister Leah's missing, and it's all my fault. We'd searched for her everywhere for five years, but still, no news. It was a terrible time for my family, but instead of showing us support, the neighbors spread absurd rumors about Leah's disappearance. Some said the devil took her, while others said we sacrificed her during a satanic ritual. These heartless people were never going to change their minds about us, so I decided to just go along with it. This is why no one dares to bother me, as they don't want to be cursed- Ouch! Oh, sorry, miss. We're just trying to catch that bird. Please don't curse us. Jesus, that poor little thing. If you hurt an innocent creature again, I'll turn you into one and see how you like having stones shot at you. Blood drained immediately from their faces as they screamed and bolted. I carefully took the bird out of the bush, then brought it to my forest house. This is my secret hideout deep in the forest. I have my own garden where I plant herbs to heal injured animals. This isn't a wild bird. It even has a name. Must be someone's pet. Okay, Sky. So you like to sneak out, huh? The world out there is dangerous. I should bring you home. I followed the address on Skye's tag and took her there. Guess her owner wouldn't be happy if they thought a witch had cursed her, so it's better not to show myself. No one wants anything to do with a witch. But no matter how annoyed or scared they acted, I just don't care. Having the place to myself has its perks. But then out of the blue, a guy slumped on the chair opposite me. How dare he? I could feel his eyes peeking at me, another idiot wanting to test his courage. Hey, Sage, right? We're in the same English literature class, but in case you didn't know, I'm Mark. Why should I know your name? Oh, I... I just wanted to... If you don't want to get diarrhea, sleep paralysis, or skin rashes, don't ever talk to me. Then I turned around to leave, but tripped over something and fell forward. You alright? This is crazy. Who asked him to do that? Then I came home to find an angry crowd in front of my house. Those eerie sounds are keeping us awake at night. What kind of dark magic are you practicing? Your black sorcery made my curling iron overheat and burn my hair. Must be some demonic influence messing around here. Turns out, strange things were happening to every house in the neighborhood. So these superstitious people blamed everything on my family and even wanted to kick us out. We can't move. We have to wait here. For Leah. She's with the devil now. She's obviously not coming back. So go away. Never talk about my sister like that again. Get out of here! Coincidentally, there was a loud rumble of thunder right at that moment. Horrified, they started pointing and calling me a witch. Go home, everyone. For your own safety, I'll take it from here. 
This man is Mr. Thompson, the town's mayor. He came with an offer to help our family move away in peace. Believe me, it's best for everyone. If and when your daughter comes back, you'll be informed right away. After he left, my parents seemed to be thinking about moving away for real. What's gotten into them? We didn't do anything wrong. Why do we have to leave? I'm not going anywhere. My parents might be weak, but I'm not. I'll wait for my sister here. She promised me she'd help me care for those poor creatures. She will be back. Achoo! What was that? It sounds like a guy's sneeze? Who's there? Show yourself! Ugh, you idiot. Come out alone. Both of you. Now. Those two look familiar. Right, they're Meg and Nick, the infamous best friend duo in my school. It turns out they were curious about the strange phenomena happening at Meg's house too. They wanted to see if I was really using witchcraft to cause all that. We didn't expect to see you healing animals here. Why do you let people think you're a witch? They can call me a witch, an alien, or whatever. I don't care, as long as they leave me be. I hate it when people annoy me, which is what you two are doing now. Quit following me and never come here again. But they didn't leave. Instead, Meg told me about a black rose that always appeared at the scene. Of course, it reminds the townsfolk of my family. Nick thought that made no sense. I mean, if it really was us, why would we make it that obvious? Hmm, someone's clearly trying to frame us. That's it. If I found that person, my family could live here in peace again. We'll investigate together. We can catch the bad guy and be heroes, like a detective squad. Sounds like you've been watching too much Scooby-Doo. And why aren't you guys scared of me? Actually, I'd make a great Daphne. And come on, we just saw you feeding the cats. Even if you are a witch, then you must be a kind one. The next day, I was going downstairs when I heard some chattering noise. Are those angry townsfolk back? I was about to scare them away, but I saw my parents warmly welcoming Meg and Nick? This is the first time I'd had friends come over, so my parents were overreacting. I hurriedly pulled my so-called friends out of the house. I guess disturbing me has become a habit to you, huh? We didn't know how else to contact you. Anyway, we'd like to introduce you to an IT expert. He's agreed to help us. Then suddenly, a guy standing behind the black rose bush appeared and said hi to me. Isn't that the guy from the library? This is Mark, the newest member of our squad. Good to see you again. I hope you'll remember my name this time. So, this Mark guy was really serious about this. He's now telling Nick how he could get data from all of the cameras in the neighborhood, which sounded like some kind of alien language to me. Look, our tech genius found something. Mark is awesome, right, Sage? Um, I guess? Um, someone hacked into these houses' networks and was causing their electrical appliances to go haywire. And every night at 11 o'clock sharp, the camera would be disconnected. Not for long, just enough for someone to place a black rose at the scene unnoticed. Can you track down that hacker's IP address? Yes, and also their coordinates. That's Clara's house? Wait, Clara? The drama queen who always plays up everything about me? Does she hate me that much to target my whole family? We reached out to Clara to talk privately, but she flat out denied everything. What is wrong with you? Did this witch hypnotize you into becoming her slave? Blink twice if you need help. <laughs> we have proof. You can't get away with this. Are you threatening me? This is illegal. I will tell my father about this. You think you're a big deal just because your father is the mayor? Big enough for you to watch out. She's the mayor's daughter? What's with that smug attitude? Everyone in this school remembers how she embarrassed herself last year after Mark rejected her. You may not know this, but Mark is the most popular guy among the girls in our school. It, um, it doesn't matter. I'm not interested in those girls. You don't have to explain yourself to me. I don't even care. The atmosphere suddenly became weirdly awkward. Well. Now the only way is to stalk Clara and catch her red-handed. But we've been sitting here for an hour, and nothing's happened. This snooping scheme is so silly. I was about to leave when Mark stopped me. Someone was coming out of Clara's house. Gotcha. Still trying to deny it now, Clara? Mark took off his mask, but who's this man? He suddenly flung out, then attacked Mark and ran off. We were about to chase him when Mark cried out in pain. Meg and Nick told me to take Mark home while they chased after the guy. I brought him home. Hmm, this house looks so familiar. Oh, this was the owner's house of Skye, the bird I'd saved. Mark explained he'd seen me bring Skye back and was impressed with the note I'd left on how to take care of its wound. I knew everyone had been wrong about you, so I wanted to thank you and be your friend. I'm not someone who could make friends. Then I quickly left. The next day, Mark helped us arrange a meeting with Clara at the cafe where he worked. 
When Claire heard about the man coming out of her house last night, she seemed shaken and said he was probably one of her dad's staff. However, when Meg asked her for her help, Clara refused. We hit a dead end again, but Mark said he already had a solution. Before he could tell us, the cafe owner appeared and told me that spooky stuff was happening and asked me to leave. The holy statue, the town's symbol, was broken, and they found another black rose at the scene. Meg and Nick immediately jumped to my defense, but he didn't listen. He also forbade Mark from hanging out with me, or else he'd fire him. I'll leave now! See? I'm not good at making friends. I only bring them trouble. I dashed away so no one could see me cry. However, suddenly, someone's hand grabbed mine, then pulled me onto the bus just as it arrived at its stop. Mark? What are you doing? He'll fire you! I quit. That kind of boss doesn't get to fire me. It's all my fault. Don't worry. I have a ton of different jobs. Waiter, dog walker, even babysitter. Anything that makes money. What's the money for? This bus will take you to the answer. We got off at the last stop. An orphanage. So Mark was donating the money he earned to these orphans. Promise me you'll show them your true kind side. At first, I wasn't sure if I could, but then I gradually opened up to these sweet kids. Suddenly, I saw a familiar figure watching other children having fun from afar. Is that... Leah? My sister? Turns out, five years ago, a lost kid was found wandering by the bus stop. She was so scared that she couldn't remember anything about her family. She only said a few separate words like funeral or dead people, so the nuns thought her parents had passed away and took her in. During her time here, she couldn't blend in with other kids. Seeing how Leah pushes others away, I saw myself in her. She shouldn't live her life the same way I do. I then called my parents and they came to pick us up right away. Oh boy, it surely was the tearful reunion of the century. Thank you so much. We only found Leah thanks to you. I'm glad to help, but that's not all. I've got something else to show you. As it turned out, Mark bugged Clara's phone at the cafe. It recorded a call she had with her father, exposing him as the culprit behind the town's mishaps. It appears Mr. Mayor wanted to build a shopping mall, but he needed to clear up some space for it. Using my family's bad rap, he played spooky tricks on the townspeople to scare them into selling their homes for cheap. When Clara found out the truth, she begged her father to stop, but he refused to. Meg and Nick posted the recording on the internet, causing outrage among our town. The cops arrested him, and my family's name was cleared. All our neighbors apologized to my family for letting their superstitions blindside them. My parents were obviously touched, so they forgave them all, and threw a party. So my family was reunited. Not only did I find my sister, but also three good friends. Well, maybe two good friends, and one more than just a friend.